He said he was shaking his hand at Old Trafford. We went on the pitch to me and then he just didn't do it. I'm like sort of out wide and he sort of rolls in the box. He looks like he falls on him. But then after the game, it comes out like, oh, I think he's bit him. And then he just went, oh, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> and he pumped his bot, his big book in, and he was going to, he had in his book like how many times every player pissed him off. You've seen the clip, the ball lands to him, and he either dug out, he just blasts the ball at the dugout on the whistle. Who's Suarez? Though? Suarez at the Man United bench just blasted it straight at him. Yeah, we're getting booed. It was all over, honestly, for three, four months, it was all over playing, coming on, it was like booing, and you're thinking, this is my hometown team, mate. And then come the Friday, you say, right, like, back to work now. And then we go home, and we won four games on the belt, and I was thinking, it's been on the piss for four days in Dubai, how the hell are we going to win four games? But we just did. Sam played four, six. Think of that. Against <laughs> Tottenham, I was thinking, I'm going to score. He'd been all tough, his big tunnel, and then goes into a little tiny bit, and then it just was kicking off. Proper kicking off. Kicking off, and you see Rooney <laughs> then running the down, and then Rooney's at the back. I remember we were at the back, I was thinking, I'm definitely at the back here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Under the Cosh political broadcast. Well, we're sat here as one of us signing for Real Madrid, by the way, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> But we've got even bigger news than Chris Brown <laughs> has signed for Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> Who's back? Who knows wins are back. With a bang. With a bang. We've got some more who knows wins leagues coming. We've just finished recording, haven't we? So we thought we'd uh, share the message. Who knows wins leagues back every Saturday. Can't wait. You Five loved it, didn't in. you? Yeah, I enjoyed it, but you loved it. Yeah, really did. I rang it. him and told him, who knows wins are back. He just went, yes. Did you get naked? Uh, I probably were naked anyway. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I, I'm, I'm a terrible neck here, me, with this. No, but the Unos Wins Leagues are back. We've got the uh, 10 games every weekend on a Saturday. Five pound, pop your, pop your fiver in the pot, make your predictions, and uh, the top three split the pot. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. Good fun, isn't it? Yeah. Good yeah. weekend fun. So we'll, we'll, we'll be taking part every week. I've got my predictions in already for, for next week. You are taking it serious, aren't you? Oh, I'm I. I've been looking up form and everything. I genuinely don't think I've ever felt as awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel. Do you pick your yeah. teams yeah. yet? Not yet, no. I went to see your injuries. <laughs> Good shout. Yeah. yeah, injuries and team news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. I feel like Ronnie Moore. <laughs> <laughs> so the link is in the description of the video that you can click straight on, uh, sign up, or, or you can go on um, the iTunes store or Google Play, download the Unos Wins app, and uh, the Under the Cosh Leagues are back. And uh, like we said before, it's just good. You're not, you're not, even if you lose, you're not giving your money to the bookies, yeah. are you? Somebody's having a drink and a nice meal so or bet- already on it, yeah. aren't they? Between That's- us all, we're all putting our money in pot, and some of us will be getting a share of the winnings. Get your friends involved, get your family involved. Yeah, grand nan. It's good crack, isn't it? It's not as easy as what some people make it look getting 10 out of 10, by the way. I don't think it'll be done very often, put it that way. No, I know, yeah. 10 out of 10. Mm. We've got Parky's Plonkers as well. JP scooped the pot. Where you're picking the worst ones every week and you still get a bit of a prize. Yeah. So even if you're crap, you've still got a chance. (laughs) And I'll be honest with you, I have been crap as well. I'm not very good. But you've got to be in it to win it, haven't you? So who knows wins it. leagues are back. Just follow the link in the description to join the leagues. Make your ten predictions, and who knows you might get any be getting a share of the spoils. Enjoy yourself. Stuart, how are we doing? Pretty good, mate. We're yeah. back after yeah. being kicked out last week. Bad one at. Well, the wedding fair arrived that we were unaware, unaware yeah. of. Kicked us out. We just got a sign through the window saying, "Please get out, ASAP." ASAP. <laughs> you <laughs> fucked up, though, ain't you? How have I fucked up? By booking a room that weren't suitable. Right or wrong? Are you, I'm, 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 are you going to speak up? No. Just the you sheer... You The sheer cheek of him, innit? Doesn't lift a <laughs> finger, you know, Stu. Doesn't <laughs> do I'm anything. Out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy here. <laughs> no, thanks for coming back. Yeah. No problem. I think it was the fact that we paid for his dinner last time, he's hoping for... Yeah. A, what, was a nice burger as well, wasn't it? Yeah, another burger there, I think. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, cheers, man. Um, okay, where were we at Liverpool? I was going to say, where do we get to? Yeah, I think we just arrived. We just arrived at Liverpool. Yeah, I think we are. I think so, yeah. You nearly scored a worldie on your debut, didn't you? Nearly, yeah. Nearly. Uh, <laughs> Sunderland, actually, round it was. Was that? Yeah, I was the nearly one. Uh, just went on a dribble and uh, cut inside and hit one off the bar. That would have been nice because that would have set me up nicely yeah. to kick on and then, and, uh, like I said, I didn't score for, for quite a while, to be honest. And, uh, See, that is like a, 
like a sliding doors moment. Like yeah. If that had gone in. I want to hit it as well. I thought I'd rattle that, that in and then rattle the barn. And yeah. like I said, we uh, we started off all right in the season. We had a couple. We beat Arsenal and and then you know as, as we got a couple of draws along the way, we started to you know we weren't doing good enough really to be honest. Mm-hmm. Was it you know walking in that that first day? I mean, it's Liverpool, isn't it? Yeah. You know, do you, do you touch yeah. do you touch the sign on the first first yeah, walk in the tunnel? I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. Uh, no, they were all right. Like I say, when in, they were, they were dead quiet lads, I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, when you walk in, it was, you know, they just sort of like look at you like maybe you're just another player. Different. Uh, uh, yeah, di- yeah, different. Not that they weren't, they weren't bad lads, you know, they weren't like not very welcome. It was just that it was very quiet. Obviously, I knew a few of the lads that I played with uh, that helped. Uh, like I say, I'm looking at thinking of Jordan Henson. He signed on the same window as me, a lot younger than me. So I must have been very nervous for him as well. But once you start to train and like say you get in with the lads, you, it just it just becomes the norm then. Yeah. Before that, if if Tottenham came in for you <coughs> and Liverpool, who were you signing for? Liverpool. Would you still go on? Yeah, Liverpool, yeah. It was always like I wasn't like a fan of Liverpool, but every time I used to play there, I used to think it's just the atmosphere that you know, everyone will tell you it's, uh just playing at Anfield. You know, it, it's brilliant the atmosphere and stuff like that. And like I said, it was Kenny Douglas he wanted to sign me and, and yeah. So it was always Liverpool for me. Is it a different city than any other you've played in? Liverpool, because it's like very football orientated, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, when, yeah, like exactly what you said. There. It's quite intense. It's it's sort of their life, isn't it? It's like if you know if you lose, say for instance, we, we did quite well against Everton. To be fair, in my time I was there, but I can imagine if we ever lost a game, it would be just to stay in your house or just don't enter the town. But they were generally good fans, like you say. They always wanted the best for you. They didn't get any abuse or anything like that. Even though we probably could have done a little bit better, but very intense. Whereas Birmingham was different. Uh, you know the. Players live sort of scattered all over. You could get out and about, but Liverpool was, you know, dead on top. But um, I enjoyed it. It was good, though. I always think Liverpool, Evans is quite a friendly derby for some reason. I just because fam- mm. even families can be yeah. divided, can't they? But I know Birmingham Villa absolutely hate each other. But yeah. I just think for some reason Liverpool, Everton. I always think they're not really nice deep down. down. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a hatred. I think to be fair, I think Liverpool was more Man United. Yeah. More Man United at home. Yeah. I thought it'd be Everton when I got there, but it was more Man United. There was a obviously with the, the titles over the years and the teams dominating for quite long periods. You could see that on match day. You could feel attention. But Everton, yes, the atmosphere was unbelievable, and you could, it was a little bit rag. But like you said, a lot of families could be mixed. So. Yeah. Could you could you go out and about in the city? I mean, we had Lonas yeah. on, uh, and he said that the lads just literally couldn't go out and about. They couldn't like mm. have a coffee after training. We say, oh, we'll go. They'll go yeah. have a coffee. Said so they couldn't do that now, which was sort of two years, three years ago. Yeah. Could you just go out and out about and? I used to. Well, I lived in the city centre when I first went there. Like the Hilton, it's right just on the edge, and uh, obviously because I'd only just signed, they were all right. They, you know, good luck and all that. And and uh, like I said, I think I said before, Carragher took me out for something to eat, and it was to one of his bars he had, and it, it was all dead relaxed. But I think, I imagine as the season went on, if I was living there, it might got a bit intense because, like I said, it's it's their life. But I moved out a little bit uh, into into the Formby area, but. Uh, they're not the good people. Do you know what I mean? The good fans are passionate. They, they want to know everything that's going on, who you sign, who we're getting, and you know the they're, they're good people. I saw the coit the news bar. And he had about ten women dripping off him. <laughs> dirt, 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 dirt. Honestly, Fuck. You know, I wish I'd have tried. Sorry, that. Hey. If you married dirt, dirt I apologise, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he left on his own anyway, but he's not now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He's actually not now. He's just got divorced. I think. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd have fucking tried. That. I don't know. He was I a know. great. I, I might have been able to nick a bird. He had his hair like proper slick. Yeah, great. Wet lad. look gel. Yeah. He was, a, he was a good lad, good he's character. He's not best-looking lad in the world, though, is he? He's funny. <laughs> oh, well, Laugh them in the bed, Chris, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, was, he, was, he was underrated, I think, the yeah. I've heard of him. He's, he always seemed that he could have a quiet game or maybe a not-so-good game, but, you know, he might score. And mm. always scored in the big games. Yeah. Man United, like they say, in Europe, before I got there, he was scoring big goals, Champions League finals, and, and he was you know he was a big player for Liverpool. Like, he played on the he ended up the right wing, I think, but he was a centre-forward when he first yeah. went. Worked ever so hard, and I think you know, Benitez turned him into a right winger. But he was a good lad, him funny. I always set him down as just a grafter. Yeah, just yeah. Graft. Oh, Dirk yeah. will run in there. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Dirk, run in yeah. there. Yeah. Dirk, Dirk, close him down. Yeah, close him down, Dirk. <laughs> Show him inside. You just ball go with salt. You Dirk, <laughs> and he just get you a goal. He get you a goal. I always remember when he never used to play sometimes. He used to be fuming, shaking his head, nah, man. but then he'd always like seem to come on and nick a goal, and yeah. he did alright. He was a good player. Did because I did. Did Andy Carroll arrive at the same time as in that summer? No, he, he signed after? in he signed in the January, January before me. Yeah. He went as I think Torres left, didn't he? Yeah. And him and Suarez signed on the same day. Did you know much about him before you went to Liverpool, Suarez? Because I no, can't really. really. No, I've seen little bits of him, but not 
like I knew he was a good player, but I didn't think as soon as you see him, you think, oh, he's, he's going to be some player. In training? Yeah, just relentless. For step. Yeah. Just he's, he's got one. I remember some lads used to say, you can't get, like, he nutmegs 10 times. Like, he's lucky. And I was like, you can't nutmeg someone 10 times and be lucky. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of the time, it doesn't even go through his legs. It'll hit his shin. Yeah. Ricochet back off him and then he's through. Yeah. He's That's all not, like, like, where did like, he sign Where did he sign from? I act. I act. <laughs> he's only 22 million or something. Oh, and then they sold only him for 22 like, million. No, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think yeah. it was a yeah. Like, yeah. And then he came and he just, you could just see he was, and obviously he had his troubles, didn't he? His first year, 18 months, but he was always a good lad. He was quite off the pitch, honestly, but put him on the pitch. Just wanted to win. One of them fight, switch on one. Yeah, on and off. But he was quite a quiet lad, just family lad, didn't go out and that, just stayed with his wife and his kids. And he was all right. He was, he's two different characters. Yeah. Did he ever frustrate you? Because I, I can remember watching him thinking, <coughs> he's like the best player in the school team. He just don't pass to anyone. No. And it was one of them. Is oh sorry, I didn't see you, but he's seen you. <laughs> <laughs> he was clever. Fuck off, Louis. Made eye contact, uh, Louis. Fuck he was clever, off. But you know, he was he was unbelievable player. I think early on he was fighting everyone. I think he had an argument with Jordan. I think it came out, didn't it? And Did uh, it? Jordan had a go at him because yeah, he was throwing his hands about. And I think in training, was, or yeah, in, in training and stuff. And then sulking. Yeah, and him and Aggie used to kick each other every day. And I think he was, he just wanted to win, to be honest. But I think as he got older, he got more mature, and then because he, he was always going to go at one of the big clubs. I think. Did he? Would he train as he played? Like yeah, he'd fight, fight make people, and then I was a bit <laughs> feisty as well, and they were just clashing. But he got on; everyone got on. But he's, yeah, yeah. he's just the way he played. He's, yeah. Were you there when he did the biting? Then yeah. What were you? What like? Louis, you can't do that, mate. I imagine to be fair, we didn't know about the bite. Well. We didn't know about the bite. I remember if you see the clip, and I'm like sort of out wide, and he sort of rolls in the box. He looks like he falls on him, but then after the game, it comes out like, oh, I think he's bit him, and then he just went, oh yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you bite him? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he, he, he yeah, just has that switch, doesn't he? Where like he just fell on him, he's getting frustrated because to be fair, Ivan has done quite well against him that day, taking the ball off him, he's trying to make him. <laughs> I think he's just lost his head and split second, and then he's probably regretted it. But that's the way he was. Biting's a funny goal too, though, isn't it? Because he's done it a few yeah. times. He did it for. I know, he's got some fucking didn't? fair old nashes to bite him. You're going to work to your strengths, aren't you? That's rich coming from me, like. But he's got some fucking nashes to ever go at. But anybody like no stick. Like, for, like you can imagine it at, a, at Preston or whatever. And there's a muzzle hanging in it, hanging on his yeah. peg next day. <laughs> so like I think the Spanish lads used to have the banter with him because obviously his English was a bit broken at the time, and they used to call him like the rat and all that and stuff. But like, I think it was always Enrique. He was one. Of, he was always on him calling him the rat, the like rat. And he was on it, and he just laughed it off. He was like, but to be fair, he was a young lad. He went through a bit of stick, you know, in the yeah. fan house, thinking he you know, might leave you, and like he wasn't he was getting bad press. Like you say, he went through the Evera thing. That was a big thing for him. Yeah. I think he you know, was hurt by all that. And uh, But then, like you say, he sort of like just get better and better. And under, like say, Brendan season, when he scored that 30-odd goal, like I say, he was always going to go to one of the big clubs. He was that good. What was the Evera thing? Did he, did he say a, a racist slur that were different in his own I think context, it, in his own country? Yeah. Yeah, which is the norm. He said in his country, and he was just sort of said, I'm not racist. I think... Uh, some of his mates or family and like I say he said I'm not racist he just said like I don't think I've done anything wrong and Cultural obviously every thing. yeah and it went and then no what, what didn't help he's, he was like he told I think he said he was shaking his hand at Old Trafford we went on the pitch to me and then he just didn't do it I think because ever was sort of like they were like going each other I think before the, the, the tunnel and the walk out and then he's just like I'm not doing it you know, I'm trying to be on it and you're trying to go with me, I'm not doing it. And that's just the way he was and he just didn't do it and we all went, oh God, he's... Did Everett put his hand out today? Put his hand out and one he, of them did. Yeah, and then he sort of said, he put his hand out but didn't put his hand out and was, stuff was going back and forward and then, and obviously just before half time, we've seen the clip, the ball lands to him near the dugout and he just blasts the ball at the dugout on the whistle. Who Suarez does? Suarez at the Man United bench just blasted it straight at him. And he sort of like he was taking a full ground and he just like, sort of didn't mind care. <laughs> he's got that one on toast by the way the old uh, no, I did put my hand out yeah. and I, oh, I didn't see you he's, yeah. a, he's a lying bastard isn't he must have had one eye on yeah and oh, it was what's going to happen here is you walking out line yeah and, and the then tunnel. obviously we go in the tunnel and it kicks off it was, but I don't know if it was sort of like I say planned because when we went, when we got there I think Vidic wasn't in the squad or the team but he was already in the tunnel he'd been all tough as big tunnel and goes into a little tiny bit and then it just was kicking off Proper kicking off. Kicking off, and you see Rooney <laughs> then running the down, and then Rooney's at the back. I remember we were at the back, I was thinking, I'm definitely at the back here. <laughs> <laughs> but Rooney was going in the back, and he was like, look, what's going on? I was like, oh, it's kicking off. And I was sort of like, keep him out because he might throw one. <laughs> but he was just like, I think we're trying to break it up. But I think, obviously, Rio and Vidic, and then made a, obviously, seen of it, and then Big Pepe got involved, and... Was it a, I'm was sure, it a I'm sure ball? Rio clocked Dirk out on the slat, on the, on the cheek. <laughs> And it was like, a, one of them, when he wasn't looking, he's clocked him, and he's like, I'm going to kill him. Dirk lost his head, I'm going to kill him, but... 
<laughs> but then he went out second half. He got beat, but he scored twice. He sort of played on on the edge all and just loved didn't it. Didn't affect him. Thrived on it. See, that's the first like tunnel bust that we've heard from like a big game. Yeah, yeah. Big at that. Was he fucking Dirk? The Manda. The Manda's the one. Fuck it. I'm, I'm going down. Love. There's and gonna be some big, trouble. Yeah, he's a big lad, obviously. But we had lads skirtle, you know, intimidating. Yeah, 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 and I was yeah. thinking, I'm keeping. Right about this. <laughs> I'm not ready for this, but uh, so good to watch that. That'd be a good one. Oh, yeah. Six. Can imagine, a few dirty fight, yeah. Can imagine Dirk, Dirk's like in the middle, in the mix like that, and yeah. a book <laughs> just gets a slide from Rio. Yeah, we'll have to have a word. I'm sure he said, yeah, Rio's clocked him on the, on the, on the slide, yeah. I, I was Suarez after the United game, you know, because United won, didn't they? And yeah. everyone's like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. right in front of him. He just, I've seen him, think you see him, he just walks off, he just... He just plays the game. To him, he's just thinking, well, I'm trying to win, I'm trying to do anything to win. We got off, we got beaten, just walk off. But he just... Maybe there's different South Americans that yeah. just want to win. They'll do anything to win. And but generally, he was a good lad. You know what I mean, he was, he was quite funny. He was quite quiet. But like I said, put him on the pitch. Different animal. By the way, I wouldn't make a fight ever either. No black belt, any? Yeah. And then the kick all... on him. Yeah. You take his teeth out. But uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm buzzing that that's happened. At that I know. Level. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love that. Like that. Up at that level, level, yeah. And, and Rio's doing slide clock. Did um, man at match league cup final. Yeah, that was probably one of my one of my better games. Uh, that was against my mate, one of the tails. Yeah. First half, I was playing left wing, and then I went right wing the second half. And to be fair, we're having banter all the way through the game. It's like, this is a cup final, and he's going, well, you piss off on the other side, and I'm piss off, I'm going to run at you. <laughs> and we were having sort of banter. And, uh, and to be fair, they, they took us to the to the wire card. If they, could have, they had a chance, I think, they on McKenny Millie put it over. And that was 1-1 uh, to make it 2-1 to them. And then, like I said, Dirk come on next time, he got one. And then Cardiff scored, I think, was it night? Like, I think it was a big turn too, weren't it? Big right on the turn, button, wasn't it? And then we went to penalties and then we missed the first two. Mm. And you saw of your best two penalty takers, Gerard missed the first one, which was an unbelievable save. Remember from Heaton, top yeah. corner, Charlie Adam skied one. And then you're thinking, oh God, our best two sort of penalty takers have missed. We're done here, they're going to win. And then we end up sneaking it in the end, yeah. I were actually a Cardiff player then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, I think yeah. you are. I, think, I remember re, uh, you said something before. Like, we out the squad, you fell out with Malky, didn't you? I were on loan somewhere, and I, and yeah. I ended up having to buy my own tickets to come to the game. Unbelievable. Yeah. Did you did you offer to take a pen, or did they I, tell you? No, I offered. So he came up, and uh, to be fair, you know, disappointed me about that day as well. I think I also remember listening to Jamie Redknapp after before in the game saying Suarez didn't want to take a penalty. Just went, no, I don't want one. He didn't have a particularly good game that game. If you remember, he's sort of like you know things weren't coming off for him, and he just went, no, I don't want a penalty, and I thought. Big play like that, we need you to take, and he didn't take one. So I think it was like Glenn Johnson up taking one. And fuck me. I think if he's had lost, <laughs> something might have been said. Yeah. You know, in the changing room, like, you know, yeah. how, you know, a player like that, like, who plays on instinct, and yeah. if he's feel like, feeling like yeah. he's had a bad bad game and he's not yeah. feeling confident, maybe he's doing a good thing. Yeah. He knows well, himself. No, like, your, your main man can't yeah. say that. He missed a couple of well early in the season. He wasn't like, like a, if he's not a great penalty taker. I know it sounds daft that because he was an unbelievable player, but Gerard was the penalty taker. You know, he's buried him nine times out of ten. And he just he just said, no, nah, I'm not. I think he said, I'm not feeling confident to take one, which, like you said, fair enough because we end up winning the shootout. But if we lose that shootout yeah. and that comes out like he didn't want to take a pen, mm. how does that get perceived? Mm. I don't know. I was going to yeah. say, I mean, look at Jordan Anderson. Didn't you like, convince him not to, to mm. leave or? Yes, oh, come, yeah, and I think you come out wrong that not convincing. I think he was going through obviously a bit of a tough spell. I think Brendan had said to him that you know Dempsey was trying to come in from Fulham, he was going to be part of the deal, and, and he didn't want to go. But I think he couldn't maybe how to say it back to Brendan like he didn't want to upset the apple cart. And we had a game that night, and we was talking in the room, and I was like, you know, if you don't want to go, you just tell him. You know, if he sort of said to me like, I might not play, but I'm staying. I'm going to fight. And if you don't want to go, you don't go. He's only a young lad, and he said, right, I know, I don't want to go. I'm going to tell him. But I think he was a little bit. You know, do I have to go to sort of keep the peace? And I was yeah, like, no, if you yeah. want to stay, you stay. <sighs> Give it a year's okay, time. Man. After that, he's playing every week and he ended up being his captain. So, captain sliding captain doors, Chrissy. I know that you like is, that. Again? No, like that's the same. That, but is didn't... A, that is a fucking career defining moment. Yeah. 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 And well, it was, I think, a few lads, I think he was a bit. He's I'll quite a lad, John. Money, if you know him, he's quite a lad. He's bit, probably a bit nervous. He's 21 year old. He's at the club and he's thinking, do I stay? I'll go here. What do I do? He's yeah. probably wanting to play. I said, if you don't want to go, just, you know, don't go. That's what I'm doing. And then he, yeah, he just he said, I'm going to decide. He didn't play, to be fair, after that for a couple of months. Yeah. Is this under Rodgers then? Yeah, and then he generally got his trust, I think, and then got back yeah. in the team. And then I'll take credit for that. Yeah. rest is history. Should I? Yeah. It's just something you do. You should as well, be getting you. <laughs> 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 Liverpool would not have won everything they have without you yeah. sorting. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh, no. It's just mad that he was going to let him go, though. Strange one, I think. Mm -hmm. Rodgers, you'd think yeah. his type of player. And... He was the same as me. I had the same situation. He came, I think, he generally got to like me as a player, but I think at the start, he was a young manager. You got to think he was still only 38, Brendan. He wanted his own style on players. But it was outright really giving us a chance to sort of show him straight away. You know, like you say, he brought in Joe Allen, Barini came in. And obviously, when you bring a player in, they get chance after chance a little bit. And to be fair, Joe Allen started off well, Barini not so good, but he kept giving him chances. And then, uh, you know, he said to me, you know, you're sort of like free to leave. He's not going to work for you here, blah, blah, blah. And then and I was thinking, well, I don't really want to leave. And then within a couple of months, the results weren't going well. He put me back in at left back. And then by the end of the season, I was playing every week. And yeah. I was playing right wing back in the team. So really, I should, you know, looking back, maybe should have thought, maybe should have given him a chance at the start. And then instead of making the decision without really giving us that chance. But How many games did he give you before you said you're free to leave? I played the first game of the season. And then... Uh, didn't play the next couple of games and then it got to like that like end of the window just before the end of the window and it was like but it could have been you might have another player lined up I don't know but strange one. didn't sort of really get a chance at first and then we you know I probably didn't get his trust or so we had a bit of a rocky patch at the start but then by the end of it we, we got on really well did he question your commitment at one point in the press or yeah he, I think it was me Jordan and uh is it George Enrique? But you say commitment. I was there training every day yeah. on the bench, trying to come on, trying to get his trust. So why did, know, why so did that's he... the worst one for me. I, yeah, but I was in his office a couple of days before, which I said, I think, why didn't he tell me in my face? He never, he said to me, no, keep working, keep... And then it was like, oh, I need more from them. I need... But we were three of Kenny's players. Yeah. You know, like, not no disrespect, his players came in, didn't set the world alight. You know, didn't question their commitment or their... You can't question my commitment if I train, turn up every day, train, yeah. but he doesn't play me. And this is where we sort of had the rocky patch at the start and I wasn't happy with it and sort of like told him like, you know, why didn't you just tell me in my face? And I really could have kicked off, but because I wanted to stay at Liverpool, I had to sort of bite my tongue and just try and work with it. And to be fair, I got back on the team. That's oh, the worst one, that, isn't it? You question your commitment. You can say that I'm shit, right, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I get that, but, yeah, yeah. But not the commitment one, especially not in the press as well. No, well, well and I'm already, you're already in the press here. They've bought you a lot of money. You're not in the team. Your manager who bought you's left. If you just said, listen, I want my own players, you sort of don't fit the way I play or whatever. No, I have no problem shaking your hand, sort of deal, like, let's go. But then when they do that... But I think, I think when you look back, like I said, he was a young manager, was he trying to just, this yeah. is the way I have to get him out? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I was always, thinking that. Has he questioned his commitment to go and play football? You know, because you you obviously stayed, Jordan stayed. Yeah. I don't know if he was trying to get Enrique out as well, mm. but it was just like planting a seed. Yeah. Or is he looking for a reaction? Of... Like, would, would, would he <laughs> look back on that now, like, just let's say about Jordan Henderson and just think... Yeah, he might look at that and think, "Yeah, I questioned his commitment in the press, yeah. and it, he kicked on from there. It, it gave him that." that I know. Like, to... But you don't have to go to the press; you can say it. Say it to me first, yeah. Yeah, You need to do better. Up. But you, you, it's you use the word hey, what's embar commitment? embarrassing people in in front yeah. of millions of people out, out, yeah. out in the out in the open. Yeah, but I wouldn't get, the, wouldn't get the right reaction out of me. I don't think. Well, no. it didn't out of me. I still hate Phil Brown now. Yeah, that's I'll what. be honest. I was fuming, but I was thinking, I don't want to leave Liverpool, so. If I fall out with him, he picks the team. He yeah. picks the players. So I sort of bite my tongue and thought, like, show him sort of thing, get your head down. And then he just put me back in. What's he like game. as a character, Brendan? Because I've always thought he were an absolute arsehole, right? <laughs> Ever since mm. I seen that programme and he got a portrait of himself at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the programme made him in good light, did it? I think it, you know, at the start, he was, listen, he was very confident when he came in. I think maybe because he was young, he had big personalities in the squad, he maybe thought he had to be like that. He was a bit, and he's arrogant the way he works, if you know what I mean. His team, he goes, no, we can beat these. He's, he's dead confident in what, he's, what he does, believe him. But Jenny was all right. He was, with me, he was, like I say, we had a rocky patch at the start, which I was fuming about, to be honest. And that's when I thought, like, me and him are not going to get on here. But then by the end, we, we were fine. Because did, did he do what, the envelopes, wasn't it? You... Yeah, but he got the envelope story wrong. So <laughs> the, I think the lads clicked onto it, didn't they? Because I, did Ferguson do it where he said, I've got three envelopes here. Don't be one of the three. He said, yeah. I've already picked the three players out. Right. And they're in the envelope. But the season hasn't even started. So, you know, say for instance, I was in that envelope, but I had a blind in season. Would he have opened that envelope and told everyone? Yeah. So then you kill yourself. So he's, I think he got the story wrong. Oh, he messed it up. I don't understand. He? So <laughs> Ferguson said, I've got three envelopes here. If we don't win the league, three players will let us down this season. Don't be in that envelope and be with one of them three. I think Brendan said, I've already picked three players out. There and they're already in the envelope. But like I said, if I had a blind and season, I was in the envelope, what have you told everyone? Yeah. And then a couple <laughs> of weeks later, me, Enrique and Jordan get a dig out. <laughs> <laughs> You're in that envelope. You were nailed on, weren't you? Just Stuart. 
<laughs> Best wishes, adios, Brendan. So did he? Did but he? Do you know what I mean? It's like, is it? Is it all? Se- I don't mm. know. So did he? I'm assuming he didn't open the envelope. No, he didn't. He? No, because he played me after that. So. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. Unless, there'll be a line through. There'll be a line yeah. through yeah. somebody else underneath. Unless you like the Earl of a, of a town, I don't think you can have a portrait of yourself in a in your house. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need like your granddad and your granddad's granddad. You know. Walking up the stairs in these big country manners. Yeah, a bit you, chocolate. You can't have a fucking picture of yourself. Imagine walking every morning, every day, coming home from work, and you're oh, that's me, that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Looking, Looking like you, good, John Brendan. Brendan. I'm looking good. I'm looking well here, aren't I? Look at that. Look like John, I'd have one on my wall. Is <laughs> <laughs> Bellamy there? Why are you? Bell's there. Yeah, Bellamy. How, because we, I mean, we, we always end up speaking a lot about Craig Bellamy, don't we? But... Um, like a lot of the lads have said, how his expectations were really high, yeah. standards were really high uh, at teams like Cardiff and, mm. and City. So, what was he like at Liverpool, like with the Gerrards and the Suarezes around him? Was he? No, I didn't have a go at them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he had a couple of goals at a couple of young lads uh, a few times. And to be fair, better than I got on great with Valens. He was all right, like you said, he wanted to win. Uh, I think uh, he, he commented he did quite well. To be fair, when he played, but he didn't play a lot. I think he was having a bit of tough time as well and uh, but like you say he, he probably knew he could pick on Bellas he was a bit like that I think you know one day I think I said before that he uh, said something to Kenny in the dressing room and then I guess I've never seen Gerard lose his head ever like maybe once or twice and he'd give him a dressing down and yeah. he sort of didn't want to know but uh, that's obviously been coming on it that's built up yeah it's brewing over and, a while but that's what Stevie sort of did sort of watch people you know how it went on and then I think he just thought I've had enough of this and he needs to and he, he gave him it and uh do you think it's good that Bellamy didn't say anything back, or do you think, oh, you're a bit of a fraud, really? Because you're always mouthing off, and if you're mouthing off at the young lads, or yeah. the, the yeah. lower. But he's having to go to the manager as well, and then, I mean, has, you know, Kenny's an absolute legend, didn't he? And then, then they had a little bit of an argument, and then Stevie's probably thought, you can't speak to a manager, like, especially not him like that, and maybe just it's built up, like you said, and he's, he's just dressed him down. Who were they with the golf club incident then? Were you? No, that was before. That, I think that was the first time he's ever Risa won him, but uh, I'm not really sure what the full story but I think he clouted him because he wouldn't sing or something on the karaoke, so he clouted him. <laughs> so the club? Him. Oh, with the club. He was in bed, I think, and he's gone in the room and Risa's literally asleep and he's just started clouting him in the club. But have you seen the size of John and Risa? <laughs> like, he's absolutely massive and I'm surprised like he didn't try to front him, you know, the next day maybe clout him, but the lad said he was quite a quiet lad and just didn't really want to know about it, but yeah, Bella's clouted him in the club. To be fair though, I remember, I, I remember at Sunland. Um, and he was at Newcastle Bellamy, mm. and he was given. Remember that Sean Thornton? Yeah, he was given Sean a little bit, and Sean was quite handy. And apparently Bellamy shit his pants really? when Bell, when Sean yeah. went for him like come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was all right with Bellas, I think, like you said. But he had a couple of goals at young lads. But maybe he was trying to think a young lad. I'm trying to toughen him up a bit. I don't. I don't really yeah, know. But yeah, yeah. he was generally fine. I remember being on Christmas Do with Donny, and he he was just because he played with David Cottrell mm. in the Wales squad. Yeah. And he was just being a dick to Cots. Like, who mm. do you think you're asked? Are you talking to talking to Ross? <laughs> like, <laughs> needless. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they, if they had history. I'll have to ask Cots about it. But like, embarrassed him in front. There was no yeah. need for it. He's like, what, what you didn't study yeah. Look, you think it's like, like it's kind of a bit of little man syndrome, isn't it? Yeah. But again, he's just picking his yeah, picking his targets, isn't he? He's got to stand up with him and just sort of tell him. But uh, like obviously. you did with Inti. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have flattened him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what me, a young lad, he's probably thinking, you're not going to say anything back yeah. to me, but then you meet your match one day, don't you? And you're thinking, Phew. I mean, if you like that as a person, I think you've got a front, haven't you? But yeah. Like I said, I got, I got him fine. I got him with most of the lads, they're, they're fine. But like if you did say something to me, I would have probably said something back to him, yeah. <laughs> flattened him in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me that fucking seven iron here. <laughs> I forgot about Catino as well. Catino. He must have been another one that, that when he turned up to training, you thought we'd got one here. I thought it was a ball boy when he first came. Did you see him when he ball boy? Oh, he was a little <laughs> looked about ten. He was like <laughs> little curly hair. And I think the initial six month I think he came in that window with Sturridge, didn't he? Yeah. Sturridge started to hit the ground running, bang. He was unbelievable, honestly, for the time I was there, he was unbelievable. Uh one of the best. I'd seen, but he just couldn't, stay, you know, injuries and that he couldn't stay fit. But that little spell at the, the last six months of that season, he came in, he was unbelievable. Coutinho sort of like found his feet a little bit. He struggled early on, maybe the physicality and that of it. And I remember that first six months, like I say, he looked like a boy. And then the summer he come back, he sort of looked like he filled out a bit and his legs like look a bit bigger than, and then he just, whew, you could see he was like, I was thinking I might have to up my game here because he could get me out the team. 
He was, was unbelievable. He, he, he? he was unbelievable. And great lad as well, dead quiet, uh, but unbelievable. And like I say, that season, Liverpool nearly won the league. He was, you know, everyone talks about yeah. Suarez and his goals, but he, he was up there as well. Yeah. Do you think Sturridge is just one of them players that his body's not right for football? He's, yeah. he's just in the wrong... Because he's not, he's not playing yeah. now, is he? Is he? I think no, maybe mentally as well with him. He's, he, he, I think he had to be 100% fit. And, whereas on the other hand, I think the lads will tell you, like Suarez would play with like broken leg. Different mentality, you know what I mean? But yeah. if you're talking about ability-wise, Suarez has had the career, but Sturridge should have had that career as well because he was both feet, could chop, pace, could finish. Because but he, he had to be 100% fit. But he had to be 100% to See, play. That, I, I mean, from sort of 25 to retiring, I can't remember ever been feeling 100% fit. No. But I'd, like I said, it's... He might tell you another story. I don't know. He might have, you know, he might have been proper injured. I don't know. But I think the general feeling was like, you know, he had to be hundred percent fit because he was dead powerful the way he played. So he probably worried about his body, but he was unbelievable, unbelievable player. It's a shame, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's you been, know what I mean? He's, no, he's, he's in Turkey. No, he's in playing. Obviously, I don't think. No, no he was in Turkey. Yeah, and he's left. left. And yeah, but I, I'm sure I saw an article the other day that he's he's willing willing to come back if yeah. somebody offers him something. I, I wasn't sure if he'd been banned or something. Did he get? A ban for for the betting was it? Oh what yeah, it? It, yeah. I'm sure his his pals all lumped on him signing for West Brom was it? Someone was yeah, it West Brom. Mm -hmm. But it just depends. Is is he willing to go to a Barnsley yeah. or a, mm. a Birmingham? That's the difference. Is isn't that it? is that where he's at? Do you think that what? Well, he's got to be, hasn't he? Yeah, he hasn't. He, he can't, he can't just say, "Oh, I'm going to go into Everton," can he? Mm. No, not because of the Liverpool connection, but a West Ham set. Yeah. It's a shame because he was oh, honestly he was. He was unbelievable when I was there in that time, that period. He sounds like he's ready for a trip to Thailand, doesn't he? Yeah, China. Guitar. How would you look back on your Liverpool spell? Probably a bit indifferent. I think, uh, so I started off, I had a, had, a, had a dip. Sort of lost my confidence a bit, I'll be honest, the first season. You see, then when I started to overthink, like I said, overthinking things, I'm you know, playing well and you know, I need to do that better. And then you start like having scored for ages and then your mind just, and I was never really like that as a player. I just sort of like played and enjoyed it and then, I look at some backs on pitches and I look, I look a bit down a bit like yeah. probably overthinking it and uh, massively in the public we, eye and all aren't you yeah that, it was like I never really had that Villa and Middlesbrough and... it didn't really have that and, and like I say the second year it was more like listen the managers obviously had to go at me I need to sort of pull my finger out and, and graft and just got my head down and then started to get confident again and like I said by the end of that season I was playing every game and I'm and, and sort of scoring goals and doing alright would you consume stuff on social media like no I wasn't I wasn't I'm not big on social media stuff like that. I mean, I have Instagram and stuff like that. But then, you're talking like ten years ago, I had nothing then. But it's just, it's just everywhere. Like you say, every game, nearly on Sky, isn't it? Every it's like a full page spread. Yeah, full page spread on a on a, on a game. On a game, you know, oh, he's not good enough. And it was always when Liverpool lost, I all spent all this money on the new players, and which generally happens at the clubs. But it was us as a full squad and team that weren't weren't performing. But but yeah, we we we, we should have done better. I think it's because the league position, we've honest and really. Did the manager do out? You know, did he notice you were short on confidence? Did anybody Kenny. try and help you? Kenny was time? great. Kenny was on sort of he was approachable and he used to say to me, like, no, I brought you in because how you played at Villa, like I think I said before, and you know, just just sort of do that. That's why you're here. You know, you're confident. And, and he started telling all the lads that saying you, you know, you're good at this, keep doing that and keep doing that. I think he was trying his best and uh and I was gutted to be honest, he lost his job at the end of the season, Kenny. And you feel a bit like obviously responsible doing he's brought us in, but you know, we spoke to him after and he was like, no, no, it is what it is. You just carry on, you'll have a decent career and just, just carry on doing what you're doing. He's a great fella. Great fella. Did uh, Gerard ever have the opportunity to leave while you were there? You know, when you were linked with Chelsea and all that, with that in that sort I of think, time? Uh, I think I was bef maybe before. He had, a, he had a few injury problems when I, in the time I was there and we did miss him because when he played, generally scored or he was a massive influence on the team and we missed him for large periods, to be honest, in the time I was there. Uh, and he was sort of like coming into his 30s then. I think he was like 33, 34 at the time. But uh, obviously I played with him years before that and you could see like he was an unbelievable player. He literally had everything, didn't he, in his locker. But maybe, like you say, if we, if we, we missed Suarez for 15 games that season mm -hmm. as well, like I say, with suspensions, put them two into a team, you sort of become yeah, eight yeah. of top, maybe six, five, I don't mm -hmm. know. But it's all this buts and maybes, isn't it? Do you think he ever wishes he did leave? I don't know. I think the I think probably the Chelsea one was the biggest one. I think he, he his head might have been a bit turned by that. He must have been thinking, "Shall I shine? They win everything." He's only normal. He, all players must think, but then he's thinking reputation. He loves Liverpool. He's got to live there with his family. Mm -hmm. But I think I think the big thing is if he won one league with Liverpool, that probably mean more than winning probably six for Chelsea. I think. Yeah. 
I know it sounds daft that, but you know he's he's still obviously well thought of. He's one of the best player in the club's history, him and Kenny. So his reputation is obviously he's still there, and he can probably go back and manage one day. And like you say, if he goes to Chelsea, then and he wants to be a manager, I think that Liverpool job yeah. probably wouldn't be there, would it? So it's got to be nailed on for it, Annie, surely, when yeah. Klopp eventually leaves, you'd think. Yeah. Mm. So what what was different then between yourself and Jordan? Was it just age when it comes to saying you can leave? When, when I left, you mean? Yeah. I th- yeah, mine was obviously an age thing. I, I didn't want to leave, I'll be honest. And I had a conversation with him in the summer, Brendan, and I was getting told the club had accepted a fee for me to go to West Ham, but he wanted me to stay. So it was all this for weeks of thinking, well, if he wants me to stay, surely he tells the club. But then the chief executive was saying, oh, well, West Ham are bid and we think it's a good you know, bid for him. We're trying to get the players in. And I think he was signing some Spanish lads at the time. I remember I asked Pass from yeah. Yeah. Vigo, he was coming in. And Brendan sat me down and said, listen, you'll start the season in the team, but I'm going to sort of change system down again and you might not play some weeks. And I sort of didn't feel his trust. Yeah. You know I, mean? I was thinking, I was just did thinking he convince that. you enough? Didn't no, not confidence. really. And I was thinking, do I go through this again? Where I think, right, okay, take it on. And then I had Big Sam, you know, ringing me saying, listen, they've accepted the bid. He obviously wants you to go. He needs another player in. And it was all sort of like trading. And I was like, you know, I just want to play. I'm sick of this like sort of thing now. Just want to feel a confidence of a manager. You know I mean, because that's what type of player I was, like a confidence player. And Big Sam, you know, you can't probably meet any better for that man management. Mm-hmm. And I just thought I've got a good feel for him. I went and spoke to him. And he's like, listen, you'll play. Don't worry, you'll play every week for me. Get your head down, enjoy it. Get back to playing. Like you said, you look like you don't play with a smile anymore. And I was thinking, I'm going to probably enjoy playing for him. And I went and it was best you know, time it was, it was unbelievable but at the same time I still didn't want to leave because it's Liverpool yeah. if Brendan Rodgers didn't want you to leave, he's ringing the chief exec saying can't uh, yeah. reject that bid he's not yeah. yeah. so my head was a bit so fried a bit for a couple of weeks and, it? Yeah, and I was thinking you know, what do I do and if the chief exec saying it they must speak they must exactly. speak about players and even if you sent me listen to you you've got back in the team you've done right but I've got a few players coming from Spain I think you should go and play you're 29 yeah. come 30 go and enjoy your rest of your career no problem shook his hand and left but it was a bit yeah, I didn't get a sort of good vibe for it. Were you ever, were you ever worried about playing the Sam Allardyce team? No, I don't know. You know, like with no. the reputation from his ball and the fucking move it up to Kevin, like, do you think, yeah. am I really going to get much of the ball here or am I just going to be chasing about? I know what you mean, like the perception, but I was thinking about players, he's had like a cotton and all them, I'm thinking, surely he didn't tell like them and and I'm glad I didn't because I went there and it was like, a, this, is, this is what we want to do, we want to play you wide and he even said to me, you know, if I get the right team, the right players, I think by, if I'm still here and you're in the next couple of years, I think you'll end up a midfield player. I think you could play like, you know, off a strike and all the centre mid. And I was thinking, all oh, right. And he said, I just think you will. You'll slow down the way you play. Sort of like a technical football, you'll end up a midfield player. And I thought, and then because of injuries, I end up going in the middle. But probably one of the best spells I had in, in my career, probably playing under him. But you surely got rid of that myth at Sunderland though, playing. I, I think it's, it's up something front on his own. That's, that's kind of un with him. And yeah. I think he, he wasn't played some good yeah. football. He didn't bother him. I think, in the, I think he did early on and then he just said, like, how can I get rid of that tag? And yeah. it is what it is. And he said, but all I do is just try and win games, get results, try and get the teams, you know, where, where I'm trying to get them. And that's all I can do, he said. And then we'll see how we go. He said, but it doesn't interest me. And he got a lot of stick at West Ham. They were saying this West Ham way, play yeah. this, play that. <laughs> you, know, it's, what, what, you know, what's the right way? He was winning was it Andy Carroll as well? Andy, but Andy didn't play for, I was there, what, two years? He didn't play for, Good eighty percent of the time, he was injured for bad injuries, and and then he brought players in like Sacco, Valencia, uh, Pace, total different way of playing to Andy, and then we sort of changed our style a little bit. Surely it's good, got to be seen as good management, though. If you look at the players that you've got and work out a way you're going to play based yeah. on that, yeah. rather yeah. than just being stubborn and going, "No, I'm yeah. playing this way." So is this the year after they've gone up from the championship then? So they've gone up from the championship and then done one year in the Prem, finished about twelfth, and then I signed then. Right, and. Uh, he was just good. He was just good to play for. Good man, manager. Uh, used to get a bit of stick sometimes because, like, he never, he never ever used to shout at me ever. Off through the lads. Yeah, no, but I think that was good man. Maybe he thought <laughs> I didn't didn't respond to him being shouted at, and he would always like shout at Kevin Nolan, always out getting on him. But his messages was to him to get to the team because he he was like he had him for years. He knew who he was about, and yeah. sometimes Kevin have a good game, but he'd have a go at him. And it was the message to the players. He was just good at handling different that, people yeah and he knew he could like rattle and he knew he, he had to just sort of come give confidence leave him alone sort of get the best out of him and he was he was great yeah, i enjoyed playing for him did you feel like less pressure going there did you just think obviously liverpool was hmm. by the sound quite intense and stuff did you think go to west ham and think i can just relax now and, and enjoy, enjoy the footy? yeah yeah i think the biggest thing was i was just 
you know, the manager likes me, sort of thing. I always got the, like, like I said, with Brendan, I was all in and out, in and out. I'm like, does he want me? Does he not want me? With him, it was like, you're going to play. So straight away, obviously, if I played bad, he probably dropped me, but he was like, you're going to play, come and enjoy it, get a smile on your face. What do you want to do? Get back in the England team. Sort of give you all the, you know, the good talk. And I just went there and just felt confident from day one. It was just good club, good lads. And just, yeah, felt a little bit at home there. It was good. Man management again, isn't it? It's mm. not, yeah. not complicated. I've got a feeling away games, when you, you obviously stop in a hotel and that, yeah. and you have your meeting at sort of half 11, 12 o'clock. Yeah. I can imagine Sam always looks like he's had four bottles of wine the yeah. night before. <laughs> and, and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you can tell, oh, fucking hell, the gaffer's, uh, yeah. the gaffer's enjoyed himself last night. Yeah. What are you one of them? Yeah, but then he didn't look, Drunk next day, he could function and do his thing. He like he knew the right and wrong times. Like I said, I remember when I signed for him in his office, he said to me, you know, right at the end, he said to me, you know, do you like going to Dubai? And I was like, oh yeah, it was great Dubai. Yeah, I love just come with me, missus and kids, just come back. And he's like, well, pull your finger out and I'll take you in the middle of the season. I was thinking, middle of the season, I'm going to do that. And then come like February time, I think uh, we sort of like we're doing all right, and then we we lost a couple of games just before this trip. And uh, remember, like Mark Norman, these lads, like this Dubai trip's good, like. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, we might train one day and then you can just chill out. I was thinking, surely not for six days. We literally landed. And he said, right, lads, it's like, say, Monday. Uh, I want you back here, say, Thursday morning. We're going on a train session for an hour. What you do in between, I don't give a shit. But you're in this hotel. I'm going over there with my wife. Don't get into trouble. Do what you want. And I was thinking, this is the middle of the season. Like, we could fall off a cliff here. <laughs> and he was like, right, we'll go for a beer then. Lads are playing golf, doing what they want for four days. And he's just seen it as a mental switch off. Yeah, relax. Twice we won, yeah, and it was like, and then come the Friday, he said, right, like, back to work now. And then we go home and we won four games on the belt. And I was thinking, we've been on the piss for four days in Dubai. How the hell are we going to win four games? But we just did. He just sort of knew, like, when to give the group something what they needed, yeah. you know what I mean? Is this the same hotel with a little football pitch at the side of it? That he, he was we in the on that told us that one. Royal yeah. Meridian. Yeah. No, it was, uh, it was like, I think, you know, Salgado played for Blackburn. He had a training centre out there. And he oh. obviously played for Sam, didn't he? Uh, and, yeah. and he took us to that. It was like a little bit down the road. I know what you mean on that one. He, he was saying he, he he justified it by having a little a little yeah. football pitch at Yeah, <laughs> and it's a training camp. camp in it. The class, yeah. and you can even get away with like with, with the missus kind of saying, "Well, they're taking us on a training camp." Yeah, yeah. it's not a lads. Get get up pitch. Germans asked for a <laughs> photo. <laughs> Everybody's <Yeah>. getting on. <laughs> <laughs> just moving cocktail yeah. like that. He, yeah. he lived in my apartment block, Sam, and I used to see him. There was a bar like at the top, and I used to go in and say after games, and my mate might be down or. You no, know, my dad might be down, we'd have a pint, and he'd come in the bar, and it wouldn't be like, think, because normally you think, shit, my manager's in, don't he? Fucking hell, hide. Just come over, all right, lad, you want a pint? And then on Monday, you go, good night, Saturday night, and he was just, like I say, I was a 31 year old lad, I was an adult, he just knew when the right and wrong times is, he was just good with the lads. But like I say, when you, when the game came and trained, you had to work hard, like. Well, had Carol struggling? Did he have to move in with, with Kevin Nolan and stuff like that? Yeah, that was, was that before I got, I think that was before I got there, yeah. I think. Uh, that was in Newcastle, wasn't it? I think. Was it? That was a Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. Same way as Brian were talking about with Sturridge, was Andy Carroll's body just not conducive to being a footballer? Good word, John. Great word. I don't even know what it means, but it sounded me. <laughs> I don't think it's the right word. I, don't, I think you'll find I'm the most intelligent on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Because <laughs> he just had injury after injury after yeah. injury, weren't it? And I think the one, the big one was his bottom of his foot, like the plantar fascia. And the way he played, Andy, he was constantly jumping and leaping. And obviously he couldn't do that with it, with his foot and he, he tore it twice. And uh, I think he was, you know, like you say, he was, he was getting frustrated. You could see he was, and to be fair to him, he was training hard, you know what I mean? And he, he kept breaking down and I think he was losing his head a little bit. And to be fair, like I say, he didn't play for, for long periods when I was there. Uh... What was the squad, the boozing squad? Who would you go out with? Be the West Kevin, Ham, yeah, Kev. Uh, Kev Nolan, James Collins, uh, Andy, when he can go out. Uh, Martin Noble now and again would come out. <coughs> we had a good squad and generally sometimes if we were off on Mondays we'd go out Sunday we'd take the girls out for food and then the lads would crack on and have a beer we had a really good group you know like mm. it was sound like we're all pisses doesn't it but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it was just like I say we'd go off the lads the girls were close the lads were close and, and Sam knew obviously what we were doing but he knew it was never go overboard it was a couple of beers and then we'd be ready to train all week again and uh, and he'd even know sometimes we'd be in Essex one night out he'd yeah. go how was it on, on Saturday night it was alright and like I say he just trusted us we were 30 year old men if he told us not to go we are probably going to go anyway yeah 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 he loves it himself, get... though. Have you seen that video of him? Was yeah. He my beer or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kept summoning up. And... <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous, man. Did, yeah. you, did you have much dealings with owners? Do you see them much? They came in pff, nearly, every, nearly every couple of days. It was, it was 
I've never seen that before. Clubs like owners, yeah. clubs have it, never come in. And uh, they always, like I say, he was under, they were always on his case. Like, if we lost a couple of games, what they're doing in training, you know, how much does he weigh and what's his body fat? They were on really? Yeah, quite. And it's, I think in the end, that's why I think he maybe just called and just said, you know, I've true. seen my time out here, I'm off because yeah, he just thought, yeah. no matter what I do, it's never really good enough. And like like a researcher, but who was, which, who was the owners then? Golden Sullivan. Golden, Golden was Sullivan. Because yeah. I always thought, you know, you hear about Al Fayed giving everybody a big. Uh, oh, I was about to say exactly the same thing. No, I no, think no, no, he no. players get like a, a little box full of dillies. No, and no, no. no. <laughs> sex, <laughs> what, no. sex dolls yeah. and yeah. fucking porn and that. Yeah, it was not, no, no. But it was just generally we were coming in. It was always when we lost me, but like, chairman's coming in again. It was like a running joke. Like, yeah. but he, he just handled them, you know what I mean? And I think Aaron Brady quite liked him. Uh, but the other two were sort of always in the, on his case. And I think in the end, I think he just thought, no matter what I do, it's not good enough for him. And but you built a good team there. Did you play with Ravel Morrison? Yeah. Uh West Ham. He was uh, I think I think it was there a year before I got there. Uh then he was he sort of got in the team, like middle of the season, and then he went on a spell where he was, he was unbelievable, really, for about three months. Uh, Remember his goal against Tottenham? Oh, was it Tottenham? Yeah, I'm actually running behind. And think, pass it, pass it. You know, you do <laughs> pass it. And that day we played like no striker, so we played. <laughs> Sam played four six. Think of that <laughs> against Tottenham. I was thinking, I'm going to score, and he said, No, let Ravello just sort of float and like. And at the time, I think Michael Dawson was centre back, and. Uh, and he was quick, Ravel, wasn't he, with his feet and that. And then it's literally, when he got it, he said, drive with it, drive it. And he's got the ball. And I think at the time, one nil up or something, we're thinking, obviously, kill the game, he's gone. He's just driving and driving. I'm thinking, just keep going. Just keep going now, then. Start passing it, you know what I mean? But <laughs> he could do things like that. He was like, he's an unbelievable player. Uh, and he was actually in that quite a nice lad, dead quiet. And uh, But obviously, I think he had a lot of problems. And yeah, and I, and I don't know, it was, like you say, it's a shame he, he didn't go on and have a good career, really. That was the time when you thought he's, he's has changed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the lads, Turned it around. the lads done everything for him. I think Big Kevin, all them before I even got there, were like helping him, Mark Noble, and you know, good lads trying to help him. And uh, yeah, he just, like you say, when he was flying, I thought he was going to get an England team. He sort of turned a corner here. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if his agent was getting in his head telling him he was going to Man City and all this palaver. And then uh, we played on, on Boxing Day one day, and he was in the team, and there was all the shout of him going to England and this and that, and we were all banging the drum for him, and uh, he just didn't turn up. Just went missing until like after New Year's Day. He was in Manchester with all his mates or whatever, and Big Sam just couldn't get hold of him. And then, just at Christmas and then he just come back after in January and just thought it was all just normal again. But so he's so he's not turned up for the game. Yeah. And he's had three weeks off, and he's just come back thinking, oh, "I'll be fine. I'll be back in the team." Yeah, I'm all right again. Yeah, but then obviously, Big Sam knew what was going on in the background, his problems, and whatever back up in Manchester with his mates and, and his family and all stuff like that so he, but he, I think he'd lost his head by then big Sam as he thought I've given him everything I've tried mm. he managed him quite well and, and like you say there's other people probably in Z like his agent and people like that and and then he just yeah didn't turn up and then he lost his place in the team again and then I think I'm not sure by the end of that season or that window he was out on loan to flipping QPR somewhere or he, went, he had a few loans what, so were, he at, were, were he in Manchester drinking or I don't, know. I don't I don't I don't know if he was a drink. I think he just he just wanted to be out and about and just be, be like a young lad, whatever. That makes it even more strange, doesn't it? When you if they're a boozer, you think fuck me, they've, they've got a yeah. problem with booze and what have you. Yeah, no. But if he doesn't drink, like what yeah. are you doing? So you like you surely like when the when the phone call comes from the club, you're like, oh fuck me, I'm in shit here. I mean I'm in shit here, but about button it and crack, crack on. Yeah, just crack on. I think like you say, you don't understand what maybe his problems were. Exactly, yeah. What an un unbelievable player. I was thinking, like, he has to play, get him in the middle. We were sort of like working like team, sort of let him float a bit and he could just drift past people, just absolutely skin people. And then, and like you say, to wait another... Would you say he's the one where uh, the biggest talent you've seen wasted? Oh, yeah. Two feet. Like you say, just glad. He just like made it look sort of easy. They can train and he probably looked at us thinking, I'm miles better than all you lot. Because he, he was that good. And then he's just, like you say... You can see why he's probably gone from club to club because he just hasn't probably found it all more settled down a little bit. But I remember he went to Middlesbrough, didn't he? It was at the end of last season. And uh, my brother-in-law signed him, Jonathan. I said, you get him playing. You've got a player there. Like, especially in the championship, he'll torture the championship. Just give him the ball. And he was like, I know, I know. And then I kept looking at the team and he wasn't, he sort of played a couple of games and was out the team. And then by the end, he was gone. He's had some Seems big like managers that. try, hasn't he? Yeah. Try, try and fucking... Yeah. Is he not at Sheffield United at one point? Yeah. Uh, Wilder. Yeah. Wilder. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, I don't know if he was the same there. I think I was speaking to one of the lads and said exactly the same as what you've said. Yeah. What a player. Yeah. Just, he's actually a nice kid as well. He was, he was lovely, lovely lad. Talked to him. 
but obviously you don't you don't really know what's probably going on someone's life. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's at Derby now, isn't he? He's playing it. Yeah. He's playing every game. Yeah, and maybe he's got to think. I think this is last chance to lose. How, 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 how many chances? How many wins he had? What age will he be? 27, 28? Yeah. Frightening player though. Maybe Rooney's the right guy for him. Maybe playing with him and being at a, a younger age, so not that much older than him. You know, five, mm. six years. How would you approach it? Like, you think of some of the managers? Big no. Sam, Sir Alex, Redknapp. Redknapp, Sir Alex, Wilder, Pulis. Was it? Good would I mean Pulis last year? Oh, a yeah. Borough. I think Lee Clark had a good spell out of him. A Burnley, if I remember right. Mm. Didn't he score a couple of goals and get, get him? I think he put, did he piss in his pond? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he probably let him go then. <laughs> Killed all his busted cars. Yeah, really. <laughs> there was a rumour, wasn't there, that he yeah, pissed he in Clark's pond. pond. <laughs> that Even it. if it's not true, we'll go yeah. with it. Yeah. We'll go with it. Yeah, leave that one in. <laughs> <laughs> well, two, two year at West Ham and then back, back to yeah. the home turf. Yeah. Back home, it was a. Uh, I mean, looking back, I mean, everyone thought I was mad what I was doing uh, because Middlesbrough had just lost out in the playoff final. Uh, I mean, Dad sort of was speaking to the chairman somewhere. I think how, how it happened, and, and it was like, uh, you know, if we got promoted, I would have come back for your stupid sort of thing. We were in the Premier League, and it was like sort of throwaway comedy. The good like, mates. Well, he might come back. They were then. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he was like, well, I'll ask him. He might come back. I don't know. He's got a young family now and he's 32, sort of coming. I'll ask him. And he's like, yeah. And they sort of went from there and it started building momentum quick and Slav and Billiter took over. I sort of at first, it didn't like sort of get a warm from him, you know, like he was bringing other players in and he said to me, well, I'm bringing Payet in. You will play one side and the other. But if he goes to number 10, he's, your, he's my number 10. You know, you don't sort of get a feel for a manager. And I was just thinking, well, I'm not sure about this. And then I had Middlesbrough lingering. And then... Uh, were you after getting away from West Ham or were you no, happy? I absolutely loved it, no. I absolutely loved it. And and to be honest, looking back, my heart rolled my head and I should have stayed. And and like I said, they were in the Championship. I was still playing in the in the Premier League. But uh, And then I'd actually spoke to uh, Dick Advocate at Sunderland. He wanted me to go there. Uh, and I was sort of like, you know, waiting and waiting to see what happened with the bid. And then Middles just said, right, we'll, we'll get the bid. And it was, it was hard. Like, Karen Bailey rang me up and said, you're not going. It's not happening. Put the phone down on me. It's like, all right, that ain't happening. Kept ringing her back, kept ringing her back, and she was hard to deal with, to be honest. Like, like you say, she's very good at her job, isn't she? But what was it, your main thing then? Why, why you wanted to, why were you ringing her? Just because I left on a, on a relegation at Middlesbrough when I first left, uh, injured. And then obviously they had a good team. I could see they were building, they were buying Nugent was coming in that uh, year. Uh, I think Stowani came in. They were building like literally like a Premier League team. I thought, we'll go up. And I just wanted to get promoted and help sort of like to help the team. But like I say, looking back, it was probably you know, the, the wrong... Like I say, getting promoted was the main thing, which I did, but obviously the problems they had there when I went there and not really enjoying it as much as I should have, that I made a, probably a bad decision. But Billis couldn't get his head around it. I was going to see him saying, listen, I want to go home and the family's young and that. And he was like, well, can you not just go home in like two years' time? Like, why do you need to go now? I was like, I've got a young family and I want to get him, help him get promoted. And he was like, but you play in the Premier League. I don't understand what you're doing. And I, I could see the general and like, is this... Is this a Disbelief. Looking back, like, nothing... can you see it? Can you see oh, what yeah. he was getting... He must have been thinking, like, have I done something wrong or was... What's you set your heart on it at this point. Yeah, and then I sort of like, right, it's happening this, this, either way it's happening. Did you feel like you wanted to maybe write some, because did you get some stick for leaving? Obviously, home time. No. Did I get some stick for leaving Middlesbrough? The first time, yeah. No, no, because I, I was injured. I was I was yeah. staying, wasn't I? And then, and then the club had said, no, Bill of Bid, you sort of, you're going. <laughs> and then obviously it was Premier League and I, I wanted to go, but uh, no, it, it was good when I went back. Like I said, it was all, it was all rosy, but uh, like I say, yeah, looking back, it was... You know, probably the wrong decision to do. I was playing the Premier League and left. Yeah. If you're going to play as high as you can for as long as you can. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you would have got another Prem team yeah. if, if yeah. you were leaving, but you still had yours in your Like Sunderland were in the Prem, the state yeah. of Abdicat, and I was speaking to him, but I think it was hometown club. And yeah, I just got a sort of a buzz for it, thinking, oh, we can get promoted and go back and I'll be at home playing the Premier League. Yeah, that, that was me thinking at the time. Looking back, it was obviously the wrong thing to do because it was nothing to do with Billich. He was, he was sound. He was, you know, obviously he was a bit. A, that's the character he is. He's not like a big Sam of warmth. I didn't get that feeling, but yeah. it was nothing to do with him. It's mad, isn't it? You yeah. know, like you, you're, you're at a Premier League club and you've got like the option to go back. Yeah. I think you would find it hard not to. Mm. And John, I took a massive pay cut to go back to make it happen. But then they said, if we get promoted, we'll give you what you're on at West Ham. Or even things like that. Please, like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I just want to go home and... I, maybe I didn't know where my head was at the minute, thinking I'm not getting love from Billy's like I did from Sam and just get me home and it would be great at home. And I don't know. <laughs> Looking back, it was, like yeah, it was a bad decision, yeah. 
Who was in charge when you signed? Karanka. Not get on? No. From the off? Well, it sounds to me as though the, the chairman sort uh, of signed you, yeah, not like, the manager. Yeah, and then even, I think, you know, you might ask Jordan Woods when he came in, I don't think he was loved. Maybe the chairman brought him in at the time, but he brought me, Nugent in. Was the manager of the championship club? He should be like sort of good. I'm getting Premier League players here. First couple of weeks, he was fine. And then uh, Freddie Mourinho, like other manage, sort of is all about him, I thought. Uh, and he, was, he could just fall out of himself, really. Not not every player. Everyone thought it was me. He was falling out just me, but it was falling out of everyone. And he was sort of like putting fires out every now and again. You know, like, oh, I'll try and get him to play and because he's fell out of him. And even staff behind the training ground, I just found him a bit arrogant, to be honest. Yeah. A bit arrogant. And Did weak. you speak to him before you signed? He rang me up when I, uh, before we were going to Marbella on the pre-season and he was fine. First couple of weeks, fine. He was you know, talking to me and then I just got yeah, a bad feeling from him and it was, it was like, you know, he's the man, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, he used to say things to players like, he was a lot of lucky army here because, you know, you've not even played in the Premier League, but I, get, but I had played in the Premier League, Nugent had, so he couldn't say that to us. Yeah. And maybe he didn't, because he didn't have that power over us, he, he probably didn't like it, but like I said, I was just trying to get on with it and get on with it and he just... Yeah, he's, we, as the season going on, we just kept you know getting worse and worse. To be fair, he's quite lucky that you were the character that you are, because if you yeah. you could have gone the other way and totally yeah. fucked his dressing room mm, yeah. up. And to be honest, in the end, that's I, I lost my head because he was. Uh, I always remember we played a game rather than away. The lads will even tell you, and uh, he's coming in the change. We lost one nil. I was on the bench. Come on, just sat there with, with my boots on, my kit on. He's ranting, and raving, use this shit and all this and this and this. And then one of the uh, I think it was Adam Clayton next to me. He slammed his boots on the floor. Fucking this, I'm sick of you or whatever. And he's come back in, he's gone, fucking you to me. You've got no respect for me, slamming your boots. Who do you think you're? And I went, I've still got my fucking boots on. What are you talking about? Oh, so you thought it were you? I thought it was me. He knew it wasn't me, but he's trying to pick a fight because we were at each other. To that point, there was a bit of tension. He wasn't playing me and, and stuff like that. And uh, he just said, nah, you've no respect for me. If you don't want to be here, you can leave. And I said, I tell you what, I will leave, no problem. I just, just fuck off and leave me alone. And my head had gone. Just took my kit off and went in the shower. And then, you know, the next couple of days, that's totally out of character for you as well. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just not quite. I just get up. You ask anyone I've played with, I'll just get up. But, you know, when you, it's ticking for months and you're thinking, I'm sick of this shit. I'm getting stick off the fans and things are happening, thinking I was causing trouble. You know, never never done anything. It's fallen out with loads of players. Then a couple of days later, we had a meeting. And uh, this is before the Charlton game, the walkout. And he sort of got us in this circle and he apparently he's brought this big book in and he was going to, he had in this book, like, how many times every player had pissed him off. He could be like, oh, John Parkin, I don't know what to say, Sulkin, Saturday, this game. Brownie wasn't happy being on the bench. This game. And he, he was going to go around the full team and say this. And I thought, if you'd got around the full team in that book, there was no coming back, was there? <laughs> <laughs> he brought his diary. <laughs> he going, but he must, but even, even for months previous, he must have been lining that sort of thing <clears throat> up, wasn't he? Just, yeah. Well, yeah, to, to be chew, chewing over everything. Like, yeah. so, you know, stewing. John's mm -hmm. week, as we were, we were like nine, ten points clear, top of the champ. With a game in hand over Burnley and people like that, and Burnley had to win the league that year, and he was instead of keeping everything rosy, he keep going lads, fucking smashing it. We could wrap it up in March. He started to fall out of people, fighting, sort of all about him. And I was thinking, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. And then, uh, then what happened? Yeah, sorry. So we had the meeting, and then you know one of the players said, well, why, instead of your book or something, why don't you, you know, sort of just tell the people who's pissing you off and have a go? And I just sat quiet, thinking I've had an argument, but it's got him, it's forgotten. It's gone. And he's gone. Nah, I'm not fucking putting up with this. Fuck this. I'm fucking not having it. And just got up and walked out. Gone into his office, got his game and left. That was the end of that? That was the end of that. And we were thinking, we've got a game two this time. What's going on here? Then obviously he said, like, he's leaving, whatever he's doing. And then the chairman come in with a, with a like, a meeting and just said, oh, listen, Steve will take the team tomorrow. Steve Agnew. Uh, we got told that that was it. He's gone. He's done. You can't, you can't walk out on your players, can you? It's, no. yeah. it's going to be yeah. a bit weird. See, half, half I thought he was pleased. done. We went to the Charlton game. And we were all getting booed, all the lads. It looked like we got him out. You know, like all this. Were you getting the brunt of it? Oh, absolute abuse. Because obviously, I you think he was drifting out. We'd had an argument with him, but it, he was arguing with everyone over the months. But man, was, I don't know how we got out. But And uh, yeah, we were getting booed. And it was horrible. Honestly, for three, four months, it was horrible playing, coming on. It was like booing. And you're thinking, this is my hometown team. Like, this is, this is not what I signed up for when I left the Premier League. What am I doing here? Like, this is this is not nice. And honestly, it was horrible. And then uh, we'd done the Charlton game, we lost. We were terrible in the game. You could see the atmosphere was horrible. And uh, then he came back in on the Tuesday. But yeah, I was thinking he's coming back in with his tail between his legs. He's like, sorry, this and that. And he just like walked in a bit cocky and arrogant, Swag. thinking, oh, you've probably lost, you need me here. And I'm thinking, surely we get the end of the season, he has to go. 
Like, how, how are you going to build relationships with them players again? It's like, I'm going to trust you. You might not walk out again. And we were never the same. Never the same. But then come the end of the season, sort of limped over the line. But on the last day of the season, we we got a draw and got promoted. But we were 10 points clear. We should have wrapped the league up and Burnley just went like that. Fuck, I can't get my head around this. So what are you, a good manager, but not a good man manager? Or what is the actual management all right? No, nah, I, just, I just found him arrogant. Yeah. Just found him arrogant and just... There's some players might tell you that I liked him in the way the way he was, but I just found it, you know, it was you no, know, I just didn't like him. We didn't get on. Didn't like what he was about. He's a bit like, you know, I've, I've won Champions League. He's a bit like one of them. I've done this and I've done that. And I, he was Mourinho, basically. He was trying to be Mourinho. But the thing with with B Mourinho is, if you fall out of players, you need him. Man United's different when you've got forty players. Yeah, you've got quality to come in. He didn't have that in Middlesbrough. And <clears throat> yeah, there was just a load of clashes gone. And then come the summer, I thought, you know, he, he'd, he'd probably be gone. Like this, kind of be sign of a new deal. So how was the fans then when you actually got promoted then? Were, were they all fucking up? Happy yeah, days? obviously happy days. We got promoted, everyone was good. But I tell you what, he was uh, the biggest thing there, he had a good dressing room. He had a very good dressing room because that could have easily just fell apart, which come later on, you'll probably hear about what happened when we got relegated. We're not in a different scenario with your dressing room falling apart. But uh, yeah, we just never got on. And then like I say, in the Premier League season, uh, he was trying to be all right with me, played me in the team. Uh he generally just kept playing me, you know what I mean? Like, but then he come to the end of the, the season, and uh, he, he, I think, I remember the time Ramirez was trying to leave to go to Leicester, and I wasn't playing. And then one of the lads coming, so he's put the squad up on the door, and then we sort of leave fifteen minutes later. That's how it was. Like the bus leaves a quarter past three, but the squad's up at three. One of the lads gave me heads up and said, "You're not in the squad tomorrow. We're playing Stoke away." And at this time, loads of lads wanted to leave. Ramirez didn't want to be there. All the Spanish lads were causing murders, trying to just yeah, just causing murders, and then. Uh, I went to his office and just said, why am I travelling? And he said, I don't need to explain to you. I said, well, you do, because you're the manager. I'm supposed to improve. I get the team. You don't tell me. And uh, Steve Agnew, he was in the office with me. And uh, like I said, just quiet, normally getting get on with it, don't really lose my head. And I just said to him, so you're going to take a player tomorrow in, in Ramirez who doesn't want to be here, doesn't want to play for you, and you're going to leave me out of my hometown club and I'm trying to keep you in the Premier League. Like, I'll do my best. Yeah, and I said, tell you what. I said, you lose the game tomorrow. You can't carry passengers in the Premier League. You'll get fucking battered by Stoke. Caught the game the next day. We lose 2-0. He takes Ramirez off at half-time. He's just walking around. Oh, you amazed. You're watching the uh, the bidding print like that. I fucking told you to get beat. No, and I actually, John, I wasn't like, I get it. It was a bit like, well, I did fucking tell you. Like, everyone could see it. He wasn't playing. The lads were getting into him, Gaston, when he wanted to leave. Fair play. He wanted to go to Leicester, but there's ways and means of going about leaving the club, isn't there? How they were doing it, and then the next couple of days he got sacked. Some of the stories I hear in this podcast are fucking baffling. I know, yeah, mental. But then it, it kept rumbling on for months and months, and then until it come out that you know what really went on about him walking out and how it happened and stuff like that. Then I started to get cheated again by the fans, and I was thinking, well, I needed just fucking six months ago. Do you know what I mean? It was it was difficult, but is that frustrating first... in that the the fans were backing the manager? You know, when you're hearing them, booze. don't know the full story. Yeah, it was clever and. Then, I think he had a media woman as well who was working for him and she was obviously dripping stories out that though we weren't doing this for him and he's fell out with it, me or... But he, he brought Patrick Bamford in, I think, in the January as well and criticised him about March time saying he needs to do better. And, he, and that's what I think the manager's doing. When it's not going well, they sort of fling it at the players. Marino yeah. does it a few times, doesn't he? Yeah. But the thing, that, the, the fact that you were sort of 32, 33-ish, yeah. if you would have been 22, 23, you could have fucking really gone the other way, couldn't you, and really gone under. Look, that yeah. local lad, fan yeah, on yeah. you, yeah, it's difficult. It, the fact that you were at that age and mature and had, had the yeah. career that you'd had, you could half deal with it, even though yeah. it was tough. Yeah, it was tough, and, and you know, even going home, I was like angry, thinking like, and people asking me in the street, "What's happening? Oh, I heard you walked out because of you." And this, and I was thinking like, this has to get out. Like, what's going on? And I was saying to the club, "We need to, this thing to come out." And they're like, "No, nah, let it go. It'll go quiet and it'll blow over, and we'll be back to normal in a couple of months with a new manager." I was like, "No, no, no. Sorry for you to say that. I want to live here." With these people, you know what I mean, and it was it was hard, yeah. But did it affect you? Just yeah. got the truth out, didn't you? Yeah, did yeah, yeah, did. I was going on the ground getting booed, and like saying, "Mum, Dad," and I was stopping sort of some family not coming, thinking, "I'm just going to get booed anyway. Don't worry about it. I'll just get on with it." And it's, yeah, it's not enjoyable. But then, if you read what you read, you'd probably think it was me. But I'm not trying to like to say he did fall out with me, but he fell out with yeah. everyone, and he fell out with himself. To be fair, he sucked me in because outside looking in, I always thought, "Fuck, he looks good at man. Nice guy for him." Yeah. Yeah. It's that media woman. Sorted him out. Yeah. Mm. Filters on his photos. But he has been shit ever since, hasn't he? Mm. So if he's, if, he, mm. if he's like he is there at Forest and Birmingham without yeah. a good dressing room, it's always grinding tears, isn't it? Yeah. But you might get someone who quite enjoyed what he was about. Like you say, the next season he brought loads of Spanish players in, but then when he left, they didn't want to know. 
we had like people like Victor Balder saying, oh, I'm injured and stuff like that, and didn't play for the last three months, but then he was sort of in the gym every day doing his stuff, but he wasn't injured. Ramirez wanted to leave. We were getting beat every game. Local lads were playing, getting abused, and these lads were sort of not playing, but nothing gets said about it. But Imagine uh, and just, we like, just yeah, went down with a whimper, to be honest. We were relegated with like three or four games to go, and it was like it was quite embarrassing, to be honest. I can't imagine, like, just forget football, just like on a personal level, just can you imagine writing down every time somebody's pissed you off? Mm. Right? That's just churning all that, that negative stuff yeah. over, over and over again. It's yeah. not going to be, it's not going to have a positive outcome, is no, it? Yeah, because we speak a lot about having a bust up with a manager on a Saturday mm. and then being forgot about. Yeah. It sounds like he's fucking holding grudges for months on end over a mental. I'll not a fetch, fart in the shower. I'll not fetch me book in there, lads. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking I'll have a lot on you too, in my book. <laughs> yeah, strange. Fucking hell. <laughs> you, you know when you said you, you went down with a whimper, was that a worse feeling than the oh, yeah. first relegation? Because we had a goal the first one. It was a guy, we, we were having a goal, we just lost you know, the big players. We just did, you know, didn't work. But it wasn't for the you know, want to try. And, but that one was like, we, we literally just give up. These Spanish guys don't want to be you. And come that summer... He just shipped them all out the chair because we had to because we had two sort of def, uh, separate cliques in the dressing room with the Spanish who were sad and with the Carranco. We br he brought them in, and those lads trying to fight, thinking, "Well, this is my hometown team, Ben Gibson's hometown team." Grant had been there a few years. Captain thinking, I was thinking, we're going down. How the hell can you play in the Premier League with two separate cliques in the dressing room mm. and expect to click on a Saturday? Mm. And we were getting battered every week, and just it was like it was embarrassing. It was hard on Aggers because he had to take the team. And you know, some lads are saying, oh, I don't want to play, I want to go home. We've got a couple of games to go. <laughs> Going to his office, I want to kind of go home. And to go home. relegation. Fight and re no, we literally relegated, two games to go. Right. Still have to fucking turn up and play and try and get some pride or whatever. I want to go home. <laughs> Done now. <laughs> and I'm thinking, so we get booed and turn up every week, but these like no one knows all these stories. But I, this is what Agus had to deal with. And to be fair, Agus, if he'd have done well in the last couple of games, even though we relegated, he'd have probably got the job, but we're getting beat every game because the lads weren't... Tossing it. They didn't get the job. No. Well, how were the fans in the end then? Did they do they know the full story? They uh, do now, it? yeah. And then you know, I, and then I started to obviously get cheered, and then they, everyone they started to come out the stories. And then when I went back, even with Blackburn, I got you know like a round of applause and stuff like that because you know you have to sort of like fight your corners, don't you? And think, well, I'm not having this. Like, hundred percent. It's to the him. point where you're like, nah, I need something needs to be said here. Yeah, I've got to live here, <laughs> you know, for life and whatever. And like, say I might have to even go and work at the club, and people might think, well. He caused murders years ago and stuff like that. These people just come and go. These foreign lads yeah. turn up, get paid, and just come and go. But sometimes, if they're a big name, fans kind of get sucked in by it, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And they worship them. Yeah. But they forget that the honest, hard-working lads who've come yeah. through and what have you. Yeah. So it was difficult. Difficult couple of years, but it must have been frustrating. Like, the, like you imagine, like like to Valdez, maybe you know, champions, yeah. champions leagues, and everything. And mm. do you think they were a bit of a pair day for him? Yeah, I think they got they got sucked into the Spanish lads. They they were whatever he was saying. It was going sort of thing. You know what I mean? He had, he had a big influence on them. Uh, but I even remember remember Eric Steele, goalkeeping coach. He came in for a while. He had a Man United. Eric kind of been there more than a month. He was working, wasn't that? And next day he. Walking out the uh, the car park with, he said to me, that's me done, I'm off. I can't work with him. He's got a game, got off. Oh, well, does. Brad Guzan had a problem with him, I think, just training sessions, just he was tossing him off and sort of ruining the session. And, and Guzan, I've ever met him, nicest lad in the world, but a big lad. And he, he said to me, I'll, I'll, one more of this session, I'm going to twat him. Like, I'm not having his, I'm not, he's ruining the session. And he was just, but he, but he was actually all right. I mean, Valdez, I, he used to speak to me and stuff, he was all right. But then obviously behind the scenes, he was sucking people in. He's a big player, a big character, he's had a big career, mm. and these Spanish lads get attracted to him, and then all of a sudden you go, Yeah, you got two dressing rooms. Crank is on the, the manager's shit, the list, shit then. list. Put him on there, it, Chrissy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, it's as big as he's got. He's on mine. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary Monk come in, and then Pulis after that. Yeah. Did you. Well, Gary, Gary Monk was, was a, a strange one because obviously Crank had left. I think obviously there was a big who were all, we left because of us. And, and it was a strange one, Gary Monk, because we had a, I was in a beta, he called me back and said, can I have a chat with you? About 10 days before we were due back for pre-season. Yeah, no problem. And he spoke to us with a few lads and they said he was quite all right. And I thought maybe he just wants my opinion, what went on and whatever. Went in to see him about an hour having a chat and he was like, yeah, great. And I'm not really bothered what went on before with Cranker and this and more, whatever. And then, you know, telling me your know, career's been good and you've 
bet you've enjoyed it in this. But right at the end, he just said to me, but I play with a system uh, that I don't think you really fit into. Oh, she's oh. butchered you up for an hour and just... Oh, John, <laughs> and I've gone. <laughs> should, we, should we start this again? You are, Gary. <laughs> I, I think I misheard you then, Gary. Yeah. I sensed a bit of nervous great when career. he was telling me. And he said, like, obviously, you, you won't play every week, and I think at your age you need to play. And, and, and I just cut him off and said, would you want me to leave? And he said, uh, no, no, I want you to leave. But it, and I said, no, if I'm not going to play, and I'm 34, and he enjoyed the last couple of years of my career because it's been a disaster, to be honest, the last 18 months. <laughs> I'll just go. And I think I've done him a favour. Really. He was like, oh, right, oh, well, it's up to you And if you want to go. And I'm playing, like, you know, wingers on the inside and this and this and this. And I actually said to him, is that the way, like, oh, Brendan played in Liverpool? And, yeah, and I said, well, I played for him in that system. And I can play in that system, like, no problem. But, listen, you've obviously made your own decision. As if he's gone down the old, you've had a good career, haven't you, haven't you son? No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've baffled. had a great career. John I've baffled. really admired you. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm not going to be playing. <laughs> but <laughs> there is a boss to it. <laughs> <laughs> he had the same media woman as Karanka. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did. He did. Did he? Yeah. 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 And then... <coughs> I'm not going to be playing it. <laughs> yeah. You're free to lose. <laughs> he was nervous. I could tell he was nervous. But then I sort of did him a favour. I said, well, let me get some sorted out. His wife was pregnant at the time. I said, let me get some sorted out. Let me go with the 23s and train with them and keep fit. And you carry on with your sort of team, whatever you want. Then everyone thought it was our mug bombs him the 23s. But he was actually all right. He still used to talk to me in, in the canteen and stuff like that. He was all right. And so then, you are respecting for saying, look, you're not really going to play much, or you're not for me. No, I think when he was booking me up, I was thinking, I'm going to be his fucking captain here. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, like, like that. Get, get a pen out inside his jacket waiting for your new deal. <laughs> yeah, I'll sign that, Gary. Paddy. Thank then, you, Paddy, Gary. And then it was, I was a bit like, whoa, whoa what's happening here? And then I'd started to train a couple of weeks with the 23s, and I was keeping fit. It's and, mad that you said, I'll just train with 23s. Yeah. I you didn't want to yeah, be in the way. He just want me around. I'm thinking senior pro. He just want me around. He, he might think. I'm going to toss it off, which I wouldn't have, but I was thinking, you just carry on with your team. He's new manager. I'll just go out the way and go, because I can't be fucking ass. I'm not You've going to play. You've done him a right favour, here. Because I bet you yeah. he's like, sweaty palms, like, I'm going to have to tell him to train with you, team. Yeah. And you've just got to go, I'll train with you, team. Don't worry about it, Gary. <laughs> we had a bit of like, yeah, it was an arsey couple of weeks with the 23s, and then like they called me over to train with the first team, making numbers a little bit while I was trying to sort of move out. And I was going to Birmingham with Harry Redner. Deal was getting sorted and this and that. And then Middles were like, sort of saying, oh, well, we'll only pay you this to go. And then and they were saying, we haven't got the money to pay this fee. And, a little bit in and out, in and out, and then Harry was having problems with the owners. Uh, How long did you have left? I had Barrow. two years left. So I was like, so he got dragging on, dragging on, dragging on, and he got sorted near the end of the window. I said to Gary, listen, I ain't gone. I said, I've heard there's problems at Birmingham. I think Harry's going to get fucking sacked there, which he did a couple of days later. So good job I didn't, I didn't sort of go. And uh, I said to him, but listen, I ain't leaving. And my wife's pregnant and like she's having a baby and whatever, so many weeks, just I'm not leaving. I put up with no shit and then so this is what it is. I said, uh, I'll just sort of train and then come January we'll have to have another conversation but you just carry on. He put me in the squad about 10 days later, put me off the bench, put me on. The results weren't going great for him and I think I played nearly every game up until he got sacked in December. So would you, were you willing to just sit there for two years? No, no, I was going to sit till the, it was like come the end of the window, Birmingham went flat. And there was stuff about like maybe going to America, which I could have signed after the window. So that was like sort of rumbling on a bit. Uh, and it wasn't obviously going as quick. And I was thinking, I'm not going, my wife's having a baby in yeah, three weeks. Like, yeah, it's not happening. I said, I'll wait till January. I'll just train and see what happens in January. Maybe go over there then. And then, yeah, the window shut and results weren't happening. And he, he just he just put me back in. It is my love quickly, it changes, isn't it? And I, yeah. Gone from training with the 23s to from yeah. back and in. Genu- and I played, you know, quite well. He played me every week and yeah. And he was there like, yeah, was, I think it was six months and then he got sacked. Pudos came in and then like, I was his favourite. So that's when I've gone from training with 23 to like being the favourite in six months. Oh, it's like, Stewie! Yeah, I was a family. Stewie! <laughs> yeah, it's the family. I was a family. <laughs> <laughs> well, that used to be the one if you weren't playing that. No. Parky, how's the family? I uh, know I'm not playing Gaffer, but the good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find TP's training? Yeah, a bit, bit, bit boring. But to be fair, he used to say it was, I know it's boring, lads, but it'll get us some results and mm-hmm. it works. So you're sort of like, and he was all right fella. Yeah, and he, and, he, and he was good. In fact, I, I enjoyed, obviously, the most of it until the, till the end bit. Uh, but he, 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 was, he was really good. He was good with me. He was good with the senior lads, looked after us. We nearly got we got in the playoffs. Villa beat us. I think it was the year. Did Villa go that year? They beat us in the playoffs anyway. But, and uh, he, did, he, you know, he did all right. He was a good fella. Like you say, he treated everyone quite well. He was all right with me. Listen, he might have been fell out with other people, but he was all right with me. Mm. So you don't want to leave? Do you not want to leave? Middlesbrough? Yeah. No, well... 
this this is obviously the tricky bit. So I've come in my last year, and uh, he pulled me in Austria of, of all of all trips. <laughs> When I was still like half asleep, I think up the hill running. <laughs> and he just said to me, listen, you've got a year left. I like your year. Uh, if I get you another a year on top, but you take a pay cut, will you stay? And I said, absolutely no problem. Yeah, like let, let's do the deal. Like I'm 35 coming and I'll try and put you in the academy coaching after that. And we'll you know, start to work your way into the background. And I was thinking, fucking hell. Perfect. So yeah. blind this. Yeah. The months were going along, got December. Like, and I was thinking, I said, Gaffer, what's happening? Because if I play 23 games this season, I get an automatic extension on the money I'm on. And he was like, oh, right. Well, you told him that? No, they knew as well. Then, Yeah, the club knew. They were on, and he said, oh, yeah, I know, I know. And I said to him, I know what's going to happen here. You're going to get me so many games, you're not going to play me. Like, no, no, your deal will be sorted by then. And to be fair to him, he was fighting, he kept pulling me, saying, oh, they're not doing this and they won't sign this. And So I got a 22 games. <laughs> and uh, I remember he left me out of red and away. He said, I'm going to give you the rest of this game. Just before Christmas, we've got a big game on a Saturday. You'll play that one. I played that one. And I thought, this is going to be interesting. I've got three or four days before I hit this 23 mark. Trained a couple of days and you sent an atmosphere, can you? <laughs> oh, you can tell. Stewie, how's the family? <laughs> <laughs> but it was weird because, like, like I said, my brother-in-law was on the staff, Jonathan Woodgate, and he was like, what we're doing, we, you know, you need to get this sorted. You can't have contracts like this running on. We need to sort it out. You'd rather let him go or you give him one. And he just pulled me on the Friday and he said to me, uh, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I went, yeah, I do, you? Yeah. Can't play. And he went, yeah. I said, why's that? And he said, because obviously you, you triggered out of the year. I said, yeah, but you said you're sorting a deal out for me another year and I'm taking a, a, an half a pay cut sort of thing. And he just said, uh, no, the chairman won't play and this and that. I said, well, I need to see him then, the chairman. So he said, all right, and I got to meet with him. He come to the training ground and I was telling him what would happen in the deal. And he said to me, uh, if you sign a, like a waiver, which if I sign and play, then I don't get the extra year, but it'll give me a year anyway in the summer to play the last, say, 10 games, you know what I mean? So I said, right, let me have a think about it let another game go and I thought well I'm 35 if I need another club I need to play and you've generally played me Pula so I thought right I'll sign it and they'll give me a new deal in the summer I signed the waiver he come to the end of the season and the chairman said he'll speak to me then see and he'll give me another reduced deal and they didn't ring me what oh yeah so that... you've just been singing his praise you're saying what a good guy he is 400 and what, all <laughs> them games Brian Hughes was coming because I could, it's, it was like I, I signed it because I knew if if she is the fan and I can't, I need to play because managers need to see me play. And to be fair, Tony Moore said to me, he watched the last five games in the middle of his last 10 of the season I was playing. And he generally thought, oh, he could do a year for us or two and do a job. So I actually worked with my favourite way. Right. But I didn't know he was watching me until I went to his house. But <laughs> still, that's though, proper, that's cloak yeah. and dagger, that, innit? It, my dad, that's when my dad got obviously involved. I would, uh, so, well, that, do you think that was the chairman or TP or a mixture of TP gone. Oh, did he? So then, obviously, Jonathan then, this is before Jonathan was going to, in the period between he left and Jonathan got the job, we was, am I getting another year? And then they didn't ring me. And then the chief executive rang me, Neil Bowser, and said, oh, I was in a beast. Yeah, you're, you're free to leave, speak to the clubs. I went, yeah, no shit, yeah. So when I was this, him, rang me. It, so, like, in the period before you go back to pre-season. So I'm waiting, thinking they'll, like, ring me or, and then I'm thinking, I might have to try and sort a deal out somewhere because they're not ringing me. And then they, they rang me and said, oh, you're free to speak to the clubs and you can leave and, I said, yeah, no shit. But you remember what you did? You promised me a new deal. And he was like, oh, well, you know, we're trying to build a new team now. And it obviously got the finances. And I said, yeah, but yeah, whatever. And just sort of left, put the phone down. And then, listen, if you just said to me, Stu, it's not happening. You need to go. Whatever's gone on the power, you need to go. But they didn't ring me back. And I just thought, I felt a bit hurt about it. You know, you're thinking, I didn't think you'd do that to me. But business is business, I guess. But yeah, strange on that. And I think, obviously, my dad had a conversation with him and that didn't end very well. So, Heated. Yeah. Because I think we, you know, my dad's probably looking think you've heard all the shit he's been through. You come back, took, took a pay, pay cut from West Ham, tried to get from all this palaver coming. He's thinking, and you do that. But I said, Dad, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm in football every day. I know it works. And Johnny, we all played, and we, it's a shit all business in it. And they're just when your time's up, your time's up. Get out. But, but if I've, I've said it before, right? But if there's ever a time where proof that clubs don't give a fuck about anyone. That is it. Yeah. Yeah. Four hundred and four games. Four hundred and games. Four hundred and four yeah. games. Promotion. Drop, drop down and drop down from the Premier League to help the, your own yeah. team to get promoted again. Earn the club twelve million quid on the first. Cut. If they didn't want to sign you, you man, man enough to just shake the hand and go right. Fair enough. It's the bullshit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's if the bullshit that they give you. Sign a wave and help me, but at the end of the year, like you're free to leave. I probably would have anyway in a way because I need the player to, yeah. to get out. And when they're saying, "Oh, well, you know, we'll speak about it in the summer, there might be another deal for you," I'm saying, "No, right, sign a waiver." Especially the, the fact, shit, especially the fact with your personality. If it had been somebody asking me that, I think they'd have 
set, like they wouldn't have trusted me to not cause a fuss and kick yeah. off. You know, in that yeah. right, Parky, would you? You want you to play the last ten games, but you, you we don't want you here next year. I'd have, yeah. I'd have been like a fucking bear with somewhere yeah. But I, th- I think in the end, I'd have had to go in here because, like I said, Jonathan got the job. He's been brother-in-law, and then it'll be if I'm playing, he's only playing because he's. And all this comes around again. I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's probably time for me to leave and get a and just go and like sort of enjoy my football for a year or two before. Because if I had to stay there another year or two, like I said, Jonathan was losing games, weren't doing as as well, and they end up losing his job. I'm gonna get that shit with him. Yeah. You know what happens? It's, it's Chinese whispers go around. He only plays because he's, he's late to him. And... Mm. But even still, that's fucking bang out of order, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But I, it did surprise. I'll be honest, it did surprise me. But then it didn't because it, I know people will tell you over the years, ah, oh, they'll do this to you and they'll get off. And I always thought, no, they won't do that. I've been here since I was nine year old. They won't do that. That's why, because exactly the same happened with Huckabee at did Norwich. It? Yeah, he was saying last week the, they stitched him up, mm. and he's he mm. had a flipping lounge named after him. Yeah, and they filled him full of shit. Yeah, didn't even bother. Yeah, it it, it, it happens everywhere. Like said, people probably think that doesn't happen. He's probably lying or he's. But it just it just happens everywhere, doesn't it? No loyalty. Are you, are you, are you on board now? Yeah. Are you on board with me? Because you, you were arguing me <laughs> a, a, a other day about it. We're not arguing. It's just the way it's, that you do it. The mm, way. It's, like if the, if the be up front with Hooks, up front with Stewie, you yeah. go right. Fat, I've got to be man enough to take it. Yeah. But it's the bullshit that they, yeah. they feed you. It's, it's I don't know if they're really nervous. I think I have to say I have to promise them some like oh, to make it look good to get out the room. And then think, oh, fuck that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know what it is, because you're thinking, why would they say that? And then not, like, why do you do that? It's to be fair, they, 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 they actually had the excuse of your age as well, didn't they? Yeah. Like, they could, uh, yeah. Look, we, yeah. I'm with a younger team next year. You're 35. Uh, Maybe come back in a couple sometimes. of years or something, like, and we'll yeah. have a chat yeah. about a job. So sometimes fun. I wonder if it's just like a personality trait in people that are at that level of business. Me, that you've mm, got to try to see. It's a power thing that you've got to screw people over. Mm. It is what it is. I don't need to sleep over it anymore. But... Fuck you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But still, it must... A bit of taste on the, the way that you look back on your time at, yeah. at the club. Like, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I, I didn't have to go go back. I went back for the right reasons, like I said, to get promoted. Did it? help to... And then, I'm, and then I'm back living in the area. And, and like I said, I can finish my career then sort of living. Then, like I said, I'm moving again after mm-hmm. that. You know, I'm 35 year old and I'm moving again to another club to try and enjoy the last... Couple of seasons, which, but I suppose it's football is never rosy, is it? Never finishes how we probably want to finish. But there's, I think there's just ways and means of going about it. Do you enjoy like I've just put a fisherman's friend in a <laughs> <laughs> stung your nostrils? Go, go <laughs> fucking hell! Just, <laughs> pop, just popped a fisherman's friend. Yeah, yeah. he put two up each nostril. Did you enjoy Blackburn? Little sailor. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably enjoyed it. As soon good as lads. I turned up, I thought it's going to be good. This like, next couple of years, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be good. Uh, like I said, first year I played nearly every game. Because it was like a lot of injuries, and I was sort of playing everywhere. But I was, I was loving it. I felt fit, you know, felt good. I didn't feel I was like thirty six. Did you sign a two year deal then? No, I signed a one year deal. One. Signed a one year deal, and then uh, come the end of the season, we we agreed that we you know get an extension. And then I think it was about obviously COVID it didn't, it? and then there was a period where we were go- we had like ten days before we were going back, like August time, and uh, I was waiting for the paperwork to come through to sign, and they rang me up and said, "Oh, that that deal's getting pulled." Uh, we've only got a certain amount of budget. I need six or seven players in, and you're sort of 37. So you're like an afterthought of me. I need young players in. So did they use a COVID one and the money with the COVID one then? We... Yeah, the only. I don't think it was Mogger. I think he said to me, I'm actually embarrassed to make this phone call because they've made the decision, but I have to do the phone call. And I think he knew. He said, I can tell you're pissed off. And this. I said, Yeah, no shit. I've been keeping fit all summer. I've got 10 days ago, and you're telling me there's no deal. So I, I made the decision. I was on hold, and I said, You know what? That's it. I've had enough. I've had enough of them. I'm sick of fucking contracts going on and I can't play because I might just retire and just go and do something I want to do instead of getting tossed over sort of thing. And then, yeah, the months were going on, going on, and uh, they still had one more space in the squad. And then they had a COVID problem and a few injuries and they rang me back and I think it was like middle of November. And I'd sort of hadn't trained for the last four weeks of it thinking I'm retired now, that's it. And he said, can you come back and help us out? And I really should have just, probably could have just gone, you've been... He's fucking winding me up. But I thought, no, no, I want to sort of finish on a high and play and just went, yeah, I'll come back, no problem. And Same day. I think the fact that you went back... Like, like the week after, he said, give yourself a week training and sort of build yourself up to come back. I think the fact that you went back was because... Oh, I'm, I'm fucking I'm talking for you, but was the, was the fact that you went back that Mowbray had said, look, I'm embarrassed to make this phone call, but I've got to... So you knew it weren't really him. Yeah. yeah. It was, Do you it know was what I mean? being honest. 
So yeah. I'm really sorry. I, I want you in my team, but I'm in my yeah. squad. But the fucking chicken farmers have said no. Yeah. Because he'd said that to you, you were like, "Well, fair enough then." Yeah, and we got on. We got on. Me and Michael great. Like I say, he's from. He's from where I'm from, Middlesbrough, and uh, I was playing nearly every week for him. You know what I mean? I played little, most of the games and had a good season. And he was like, "No, we'll do it again if you keep playing well again another year after that. Just keep going until sort of you've had enough." And I wanted to finish on my terms, sort of thing. Like thinking, "Oh, I can't finish on a COVID." Thinking like, "I've just had a good season," and but then, like I say, by the time I got up to speed, got up to fitness. You're chasing it, aren't you? And then you know he'd had a settled team, and then uh, didn't really, you know didn't really play. But I think he brought a lot of loan players in, and you know he, he tried to be loyal to players, Mogan and stuff like that. And players were playing, and uh, they were losing games. And like I think they won two in fifteen. And I was saying to him, you know, when am I going to get a chance? And it just sort of I could sense he was trying to build a younger team, and maybe he felt like a loyalty had to bring me back because of what had happened before. And uh, the season sort of like just petered out, and. Yeah, I, got, I knew I'd made a decision. Come that Feb, January, February, I thought oh, that's it. That's me done. I didn't, I didn't privately tell him till the end, and just said, you know, I've been thinking about it a while, but that's me done. Like, I'm sick of basically all the politics and the bollocks around it. I can't be bothered. Mm. Well, so it seems like the last, if you say you went back to Middlesbrough at 31 ish, mm. the last five or six years, you just had shit. Yeah, contract. It was mostly contract wise, or maybe, obviously the manager clash, but it was all yeah. And then, yeah, and they had that little period of 35 to 36 with Mogger thinking, well, oh, I've got my buzz back here, I'm buzzing, I'm playing, yeah. I'm fitting. And then it comes again, another contract thing, and I'm thinking, this is going to be happening every year. And I just, I, just, I think, and the, your lad, you, I don't know what you lads felt at the end, but I just think, oh, I'm sick of this. Well, it's just know. scary because, well, I've blown smoke up your ass, the career that you had, just mm. for you to still go through that. Like, if it was me and him, we'd be like, yeah, we're just hanging in there yeah. and whatever. We'll deal with what we get yeah. in the nicest possible way. But you fucking play for the best, one of the best, mm. biggest clubs in England, and Fucking all the cups. caps for England, yeah, right? exactly. exactly. Yeah, and it can still happen to you. It's fucking. But you know, when you're scary. younger, you sort of like you're doing well, or you're flavour of the month, and all, and they love you, don't they? New contract, and you, and you sort of think oh, it doesn't sort of maybe happen. But then you said it's business. When you get the end, it's like, well, you pass yourself by day, just get out. Yeah. yeah. Were you we'll there for the, about... Sorry, Chris. Are we there for the Yankee Bravos? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming after, but I met Charlie the first. I, I think he went alone when I first came there, and then he came back, and then uh, I went in the treatment room one day. I mean, I'm not going to do a story because I can't tell it as good as Charlie does, but the way he used to speak and his accent and how funny he was, Charlie, was unbelievable. But that kid was like, literally do anything you tell him to do. <laughs> I've seen him at the Forest Green game oh, the, other, the other week. I didn't know he played for Forest Green and one of the lads went, that's Yankee Bravo, <laughs> there. And I'm like, what are you fucking you really like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, you fucking idiot. But he did the act of what he did in like, you know, the blinds in the treatment room you see into the gym and then literally the kid was swinging like, <laughs> and Charlie's like, I can't believe he's doing it. He's doing it, lads, he's doing it. And he's like... <laughs> But he used to just tell stories, and even when he was like trying to be funny, he was just really funny. <laughs> Good guy, Charlie. But uh, he was on loan a couple of times when I was there. But he come back at the end of it, and uh, I don't know where he is now. I think he went to Dundee. Dundee didn't he? United, but yeah. He, he was good, good lad around the dressing room, funny, uh, and he was a good player as well. I thought he was, yeah. he was a decent player. How did you look back on it all? Like if you put all the, the politics side of it and the contracts and all that, which. It's all bollocks, isn't it, really? Let's be yeah. honest, it's just business end. But the football, I loved it. I loved training, loved going in, play some great clubs, some unbelievable players, and all that was, like, unbelievable. And uh, Have you done that yet? Sat back, cup of coffee outside, mm. thought about the players you played. That's like Cafe Mambo yeah. in Ibiza. Yeah. Yeah. It's Cafe Mambo. <laughs> yeah. I did in Ibiza, and like you, John, there, I, I got a 31, 32, and thought, you know, that last couple of years was, like, an absolute load of shit. Because even when we got promoted... I knew there was still underlying issues going on with the manager was still there. It wasn't going to yeah. work. And you sort of can enjoy it as much as you can, thinking, well, I'm going to be with him again next season, probably not going to play. Stuff like that. So it was like, yeah, the last five or six years was like a battle. Mm. If you want if, if you want to put it like that, a battle. But the, before that, brilliant. Loved it. Any regrets? Nah. So even, even the time when I said, I probably made the wrong decision going back to Mills, but my... My aim was to get promoted, which I did. So I, I don't have any regrets in that you sense. You, if I went there and the manager was great at me, we got on unbelievable. It'd have been perfect and rosy. But your football career is not like that. You always fall out with probably someone along the way, or someone doesn't work out. You're not in the team, and that's what football is about, isn't it? It's how you sort of bounce back from it. And Regardless of the football as well, you were back home, your family. Yeah, do you know what I mean? T yeah, take no, the positives. Yeah, no regrets. I was lucky. I played to 37, sort of injury free. You know, some lads, like I said, don't don't play that long, do they? Get injuries or whatever. And, so yeah, I have no regrets now. 
Top man, cheers, Joey lad. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, we've got the live shows coming up, haven't we? So I can't see. Live getting show. on the decks for the, uh, <laughs> for the after party. You took the words out of my mouth, can you say? <laughs> I went with my mate's uh, birthday on, on Saturday night. He said, you going to get on for a bit? I'm going, I'm going for half an hour. Make the comeback. Of well, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to play, but I went on. <laughs> <laughs> no, cheers, mate. Really. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, mate. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Man.